No mai, hari mai, piki mai, kaki mai. Welcome to Jelly Park in Christchurch for the New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championships. It's been a year in the making and we are now down to the top four schools in the country. Our next game is the bronze medal match between the two Auckland powerhouses of Rangatoto College and Baradine. Yes, it is the Battle of the Bridge if you do come from Auckland. Two very good sides with a rich history. Joining me in commentary today, one of New Zealand's leading referees and these days associated with St. Kennegan's College, Hamish McDonald. Well, Hamish, you've been here, you've seen the competition over the last three days. There hasn't been a lot in it. Both these sides worthy of also being in that gold medal match. Such has been the small margins. Yeah, Kira Mark, really good to be here and I'm really looking forward to this fight. It's going to be a really good game between these two teams. Both going down last night, Rangi Toto on a penalty shootout to St. Cuthbert's and Berardine only going down by the one goal. So they're both really deserving of being in that final, but they'll be making sure today that they can get a hold of this bronze. And there is that Rangitoto College lineup, and plenty of depth and experience. Individuals can win your games, but it's a squad that'll win you a championship. So you've got Boyce, Walsh, Somerville, Tyndall, O'Brien, Conboy, Doyle, Raper, Coaston, Cooper, Boyce, Southcombe, and Rogers, incredibly well coached by Chelsea Geary and their assistant, well, one of New Zealand's best in Ava Cooper. For Baradine College, well, the impressive Lizzie Worth, Sia Okach, Mia Bryant, Rian Bryant, Gemma Robertson, you've got Leiden, and then Isabella Jacker, Kira Evans, Taylor Fisher, Billy Shuler, Holly Roberts, and Tallulah Goldsworthy, coached by Jordan Milich Misakini. Assistant coach is Charlotte Worth. So teams just going through the pre-game protocols. And I guess, Hamish, one of the key things here, they've played a lot of games. This is, could just come down to recovery, the fitness side of it, because it has been a very, very busy schedule for all of these teams. Yeah, they'll both be into their seventh game of the tournament. So over the four days, that's a lot of water polo. And it's going to be not only physical, but it, how they've mentally rebounded from that semi-final last night. So they've got to put that behind them and really focus on the next 24 minutes. Yeah, so... It, It'll be Baradine who will be in the white caps, Rangitoto there in the blue and their famous colours. They are the defending national champions. One of the great victories last year in upsetting the fancy diocesan got up early and ended up winning that one in a closely fought contest. And they may be disappointed that they haven't reached that final, but really it's just testament to the strength and depth that is developing in girls, in girls water polo at a secondary school level. Yeah, absolutely. And Berardine also bronze medalist from last year as well. So they'll be looking to repeat that and go two in a row. So not too far away from the introductions here as we do get underway. Not just the players who will be feeling the nerves. Large group of family, friends, alumni from different schools and, of course, the coaching staff. Hope you are enjoying this coverage. We wish both schools all the very best. It is now time to introduce our two schools.
Well, the introductions are over. All the nerves, all the talk, charts over the last 24 hours to maybe go through and right some of the wrongs, look at the positives. And I guess they will, having both been out of the Auckland region, Hamish McDonald, they will have a, played each other on the odd occasion. They'll have a little bit of historical data and a little bit of history between the two teams. And I would have thought both coaches will get a little bit of an understanding of how these sides both set up offensively and defensively. Yeah, absolutely. They would have met twice uh, in the year. They actually played in the Auckland League bronze medal match a few weeks back, and Baradine came out victorious on that occasion. So they've got Rangi Toto's number so far this year, so I'm sure Rangi will be looking for that third chance to take it over. Yeah, and Baradine, of course, were bronze medalists last year in Wellington and that was their first time I think they had medalled at a national championships. They were coached by Gold, Kurt Goldsworthy that day and his daughter Tallulah is wearing the number 12 cap. So lots of experience, a combination of youthful exuberance. But how important, four quarters of six minutes. You're yeah, really looking forward to the matchup between uh, Holly Roberts and Gabrielle Doyle on this match. Both of those two girls were in the World Championship team for New Zealand who uh, finished 8th at the World Youth Championships last year. Yeah. Um, both incredibly experienced players, and they'll be looking to lead their team from the front. Yeah, Gabriel Doyle, so what do they do? What sort of pressure do they put on the number 7 there? Is it about pressing high on her? It is physical. A lot of action goes off the ball, of course. Exclusions, the 5-on-4 situation, and it comes down to goalkeeping and two very experienced goalkeepers. Yeah, they are. Lizzie and Haley have both been playing really well this tournament, and, and you've seen them go from strength to strength. So um, it's about trusting your field blockers in those scenarios, too. Okay. So we'll see how they go. Yep, swim off. Initially goes the way of Rangi Toto. And still more than happy just to drop it back to Poppy Coaston. And first scoring opportunity, is it? And that's what we talk about. So that's Pippa Southcombe for Rangi Toto in the number 12. But automatically we see that this Baradine team pressing high on defence to take it down the left hand side through Elise Rape up it's interesting Baradine have gone straight to a press there so that'll be good for Rangitoto to know that they're not going to be playing against the zone today it looks like Baradine are keen to play a press and really try and slow that offence down yeah, and what we mean by press is getting high getting up almost in a man on man type situation forcing forcing Rangitoto to play almost in their own half in a similar situation now coming here from Rangitoto lovely little entry pass but good defence being shown there by Poppy Coaston and now tries to get the shot away a little bit ambitious from Isabella Jacker but opportunity for Baradine now go down this left hand side again oh lovely lovely little piece of individual skill worked that nicely really good play coming from and that is the first goal scoring opportunity and almost from nowhere and that is the brilliance of water polo do not blink ladies and gentlemen because just like that they can score from anywhere just have a look here from distance gets nice and high great leg drive and that is superb from that player you mentioned Gabrielle Doyle yeah, there's a little bit of miscommunication there from Berardine they sort of had two girls away from Gabby and gave her the time and space to find that shot so and that's, and that's, and that's, Chance to answer straight back here. Exclusion against number six, Emily Leiden for Rangitoto. Okay, so five on four situation. Six on five, my apologies. Getting caught up with. So six on five, opportunity here. And now chance. So Doyle looking to try and go one on one. Challenge will come here from Sasha Tyndall. Looking to try and get across. Turns Doyle, looking, waiting. Looks for the entry pass, holds on to it. And that is good defence coming from Baradine. They realise the dangers of Gabriel Doyle. Another big shot, somewhat ambitious, over the top. This time by Raper. So happy just to sit deep back in the pocket. So it's Baradine who looked to try and go down that side and managed to retain possession. Again, this. High press. Opportunity for Baradine through Goldsworthy. Taylor Fisher getting absolutely worked over by Pippa Southcombe. Shot goes wide. Yeah, both teams have had a couple of early chances. They seem to be feeling each other out a little bit here. You know, great shot from Gabby early on, but Baradine look a little bit, need to move the ball a little bit more on offense and try and crank that center forward a little bit earlier. So 
number 10 for Rangi Toto is Stevie Cooper. Another big ambitious shot, but sometimes it's those shots from distance that don't necessarily have the velocity, but have the trajectory right that can actually create havoc, particularly if your goalkeeper's off their line. And so, got to keep talking. Good high press again coming from Rangitoto. She's tough, Pippa Southcombe in the number 12. Now, chance comes, lovely little entry pass. What do the referees say here? Another exclusion. So, it will be Stevie Cooper who will exit. So, a six on five situation. Interesting, Veridine have gone straight to a 3-3. Three, three. So, three players on the top, three on the bottom in the 6-5. And the shot does come, and this time they pull the trigger. And so it is Rian Bryant, who is the goal scorer, manages to get it past Hayley Boyce. This is much better, a little bit more composed. Lovely athleticism being shown. Gets nice and high out of the water. Yeah, Berardin got the ball to the centre earlier that time. They were more isolated, earned the exclusion, and then a really well executed 6-5. So, lovely little entry pass, but look at that. Just immediately, they just jump all over number nine, which is Poppy Coaston. I generally see her as a threat as well. So now they look to try and go long over the top. Can't quite control it. Up in her face, Gabrielle Doyle. Well, we talked about how combative it is. Here's Doyle, plenty of experience. Great players just seem to have that little bit more time. Looking again for Doyle, they find her. So nicely moved. Doyle again. Does she go on her own? She's got the skills, she's got the ability. Keeper comes across, looks to lob it. Idea was right, execution was poor. It's a really good work rate from Gabby there. She's turned the ball over and then she's gone down and pushed all the way through on counter. So she's really leading her team from the front here. And a quality player. So now Mia Bryant bringing it forward. Happy to go down that right side using Bryant. Nice in that pivot roll, looks for the entry pass. Turns. So Isabel Jacker. Another exclusion. Go across. And the, another looking to try and switch play, just a little bit ambitious, but they'll still come away with it, Berardine, through Rian Bryant. And now the chance comes again. Shoots from nowhere. Better. Looking to use the width of the pull. It's a couple of six-fives now for Berardine. They've scored one of them, but the other two have looked a little bit... Their passing's been a little bit off, so they've just got to try and tidy that up, and they're going to create more chances. Yeah, what's the expectation in a 6-5? What is the expectation, the percentages of trying to score? I'd imagine teams do a lot of work in that area. Absolutely. It's a lot of time spent at training on 6-5. We're looking at for 70% is really a good 6-5 conversion rate. Okay, 70%. So pretty close, as expected. Lovely little entry pass, but still holding on. Really nice play here from Kira Evans. And, uh, my apologies for the least. Eloise Raper, and has the big shot, but this time Lizzie Worth does get up. Tough being a goalie. Height really important. Being tall preferably, but technically got to be sound as well. So now it is Holly Roberts who looks across and finds Goldsworthy. So Roberts and Goldsworthy looking to try and combine. The chance came there for Mia Bryant, just couldn't quite handle it. Getting really good service from their centre forwards though, Berardine and they keep getting the time and space. So I think they're going to keep looking there for the rest of the game. Yeah, and I'd imagine, though, that the coaching staff for Rangi Toto, Chelsea Geary, Ava Cooper, they'll be aware of that. And whether it's a timeout or whether it's at the end of the quarter, they'll look to address it. And this really will be an opportunity, won't it, for both coaches just to use this quarter to get a bit of a sense of what their opponents are doing. Yeah, absolutely. You can always plan and you've always got an idea when you're coming into a game of what the other team's going to play defensively and their structures, but... It's not until that first quarter that you actually get to find out. Okay, so Stevie Cooper for Rangi Toto, but they've said turn it over, so it'll be Mia Bryant who'll get things back underway. Happy to switch play, going from left to right. And now they look to try and press, entry pass comes, but good work being done there at the back by Poppy Coaston. She's everywhere, she's doing a good job defensively, shutting down that centre forward. Now a big shot does come this time, and it is Mia Bryant who scores and suddenly it is two goals to one and just like that and timeout has been called so just an opportunity here uh, the end of the first out. quarter oh, end, end of the first, of the first quarter. quarter okay yep. my apologies end of the first quarter 
Right on the buzzer there. Right on Great the shot. Yep. Great way to go into, isn't it? So at the end of the first quarter, let's firstly go inside Rangatoto. They're now trailing by two goals to one. Chelsea Geary, what is she wanting? What is she asking for here? I think they need a little bit more clarity around their defence and these two centre forwards. Berardina playing, you know, a centre forward, someone who plays on two metres, usually a big, strong, physical player, and they've got one on each post at the moment, and that's where all of these exclusions and both of Berardina's goals have come from. The ball going to the centre forward, the exclusion, and then finding that. So they're going to try and figure out some sort of zone defence, I would suspect, to try and make sure that Berardina don't have so much, so many 6-5 opportunities. OK, and then let's go across the other side here. So we've got... Um, Jordan... Milic Misakini, what's her message to her team? I think on their end, their defence has been pretty solid so far. They've got to make sure that you know Gabby, Gabby Doyle's going to look for these counter-attacks really consistently. She's a really good driver, so they've got to make sure they're putting pressure on her. We saw before they gave her a little bit of time and space and she executed. So for them, that, when they're in that full press, they look really, really solid on their defence, and I think they'll be reiterating that point. So Rangakoto, the defending champions, looking to try and get themselves on the podium, looking to try and win a bronze medal. Like a lot of school sports, you can have that era that come through, and you get those yes, a lot of year 13 kids, and then suddenly you lose a wave and you've got to rebuild. And very much the case for Rangatoto Baradine. Well, they're just an emerging power. First time they put medal at a nationals since last year, and they'll come away, and they're happy to go through. Taylor Fisher, in the number nine cap across here. And number two is Sia Okach. And but they turn position over, so it'll be Rangitoto who get a chance to maybe slow things down. Maybe just to sit back at the moment. Good good piece of play here from Eloise Raper. Switches. Poppy Costan. Really good on defence. But Sia Okach gets up, presses high. Now the little entry pass comes, but nicely read there by... Yeah, Taylor Fisher's doing a really good job of Baradin at centre back there. She's fronting that Rangitoto centre forward and forcing Rangitoto to try and have to move the ball over and above what they would normally have to. So driving now, driving down, chance, good defence from Rangitoto's Poppy Costan. Opportunity coming though, but just at times, it just looks like Baradin just got a little bit too much time. Now pushing forward is Okach again in the number two. She's made a difference since she's come on. here for Rangitoto surveying their options through and Louise Raper they'll come across now it's Stevie Cooper happy to just play the perimeter looking opening shot comes and it's off the top is it and what do the referees say here Genova Berardine ball now they look to go long Intended target is Rhea Bryant. But five metre penalty for Berardine. Okay, so I'll get you just to give us the reason for that, the ruling on that. So the, the centre ball, the ball's arrived at the centre forward, has made a turn towards the goal and then been attacked from behind. It prevents a probable goal, um, and therefore Berardine get a five metre. So Rian Bryant up against Haley Boyce. Which way does Boyce go? Oh, went the right way, but just too much velocity on it. And suddenly it is Baradine who have that two-goal buffer. Rangitoto somewhat in just a little bit of trouble here. Got to make sure that they score next. Don't want to find themselves down by three. It's a well-executed penalty there. Um, and a really good entry pass to find that centre forward who's holding that side. So they've done a good job, Baradine, to get the ball to the correct side of the pool and put it in. Yeah, special thanks to Baileys too for their support here across for Katamaldi. If you are looking at a real estate agent. Please go with Bailey's. Please go with those brands that support the sport you love. Chance Gums turns. And have we got one at the other end? And we've just got the exclusion. No. So, yeah, 6-5. Uh, yep, five. 6-5. Five, so opportunity here for that one-man advantage. Now, what can Rangitoto do? Can, got to be patient here. Big shot does come, and that's a very good shot, but nice and high. Very composed. And once again, Gabriel Doyle, just simply too good, gave her too much room. They just needed to get up on it. It's a really good executed shot there by Gabby. You can see the block is slightly out of position and just beat them down the line. Yeah, trying to get up there was Taylor Fisher for Baradine, but just left that door slightly open. Very, very hard. The sport hard aerobically. Now Okic. 
tonight from Barradine. That was really what Rangitoto needed to do was come back and answer. Got to stay in this. Chance comes. Oh, and this time off the upright. Big door was open. Oh, will it be a corner? No. So Haley Boyce gets play back underway. Come back up through Kostan. And she has a big ambitious shot, maybe a wasted opportunity, but again, it is the element of surprise at this level. Yeah, absolutely. Got to take those chances when they're presented to you. Particularly if you see the keeper off their line a little bit. So four six-minute periods. So three minutes remain in the second quarter. Barradine in the white caps. Cross and find Kira Evans, but nicely worked over by Doyle. Now Doyle, does she look to go on her own? Out to her left-hand side, she's got Caitlin Boyce. Boyce there in the number 12, just looking to try and come into that centre forward position, looking to try and drag a couple of defenders. Now the big shot does come off the upright. Really good cover from Baradine. They were under pressure there with Gabby on the counter, but done a good job to get back. Now they look to try and attack at the other end. Lovely little entry pass. They look to try and turn. Good piece of defending. Nicely done there by Sasha Tyndall. She'll be excluded for efforts. Barrett in another chance at the 6 5. Barrett in back into that 3 3 formation. Oh, good shot, too. Okay, just hitting the woodwork. And look at the physicality here. And that was always going to go the way of Sia Okach. Goes back. This is the danger time. Lovely entry pass. Surely must score from here. Goes all the time. Brilliant piece of goalkeeping. Superb by Hayley Boyce. Kira Evans had the time. It's a great save by Hayley. One on zero. Always really hard to make those blocks. Done a great job there. Another looking for the entry pass, but picked off by Doyle. Yeah, look at that. Just lovely little entry pass. Lovely little layoff, wasn't it? Great save. And got herself nice and high, didn't she, Haley Boys? Came off your line slightly. Just shut that gap, that angle down. So back through Doyle. Just pushed back on her haunches a little bit by Tallulah Goldsworthy. Now... Looking to just change it up. Shot clock there in the background. Five seconds left on the clock. So they'll turn position over. So good defence here from Baradine. It's a really good smothering press. They're really slowing that ring of attack down. They've got the ball to the wing with the centre forward being fronted by the centre back. So that's, a good, that's great defence from Baradine. So Rian Bryant happy to bring it forward now through Jacker. This is Jacker. The tender target was Taylor Fisher. Game Doyle though, just everywhere you turn, she's there. Now the entry pass comes, they just destroy superb piece of athleticism. Oh, 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 oh that is wonderful from Tallulah Goldsworthy, equally from Hayley Boyce. Water polo at its finest. We talk about small margins. Have a look at this. Great athleticism here, just Great to get so. the shot off. And Rangitoto have an extra man now. Tallulah Goldsworthy was excluded there at the end of that play. A chance to come back for Rangitoto. See it, opportunity. And the big shot does come. Brilliant at the other end this time from Lizzie Weir. So both goalkeepers earning their. Not so the, I was going to say earning their living today, but that's not the case here. It's not a problem at any level in this country. But yeah, now chance comes. Oh, great effort. That's what we love about it. Rian Bryant again. Just not afraid to turn and shoot. And somehow, Rangitoto survived what has been a barrage from Baradine in the last two to three minutes. Chance now coming the way of Rangitoto. They can bring it up through Roper and she shoots and she scores. And just like that, we're tied up at three. Right on the buzzer again. Second quarter in a row, we've had a buzzer beat a goal. So, half time, bronze medal match. New Zealand Secondary Schools water polo, and it is tied up at three. It's been a really interesting quarter. Berardin sort of threatened to pull away there a little bit, but Rangitoto have tied it up their defence, um, and they've come back with two great goals. So this will be a really interesting second half now. I'm interested to see what both teams come up with. 
Yeah, how often do they say, too, it's just that team that wants to look to try and score in the start of the second half. Good crowd in. It's limited capacity, so they're having to monitor the number of people that do come in, but both sides are full of spectators, family and friends. Between these two water polo powerhouses from Auckland, Baradine in the white, and Rangi Toto in the maroon and the blue. It's great composure on that last finish, to roll out like that and, and a great execution on the finish. Special mention as well today while we're here, Carmel College. They won the New Zealand Secondary School Division 2 Championships in Auckland yesterday. Uh, they took on a one of the diocesan teams, um, who we'll see in the Division 1 final later, but they took on another diocesan team and they won in a penalty shootout, so congratulations to them. And of course, my old school, Mount Albert Grammar, I think winning the boys' division too. They did indeed. So there you go. Good to see the two, that there is plenty of depth. But boy, it's tough competition. Not much separates them. So the fact there were two divisions just demonstrates the popularity of the sport at a schoolboy, schoolgirl level. Yeah, we had 20 boys, 20 teams in the boys and 14 in the girls. So another 34 teams down in, up in Auckland this week. So really good to see the sport continuing to grow. OK, so our two referees today are Cooper Stewart and Corbin Hall. Second half to get underway. Again, I want to acknowledge Caltex as well for their uh, sponsorship of Katamaldi. Again, if you need to fill up, go check out Caltex stations. Again, just go with those sponsors that get behind the sport you love. So here goes the swim off. And it will beat Rangatoto, who will get that early advantage or early possession. They'll come through Stevie Cooper. Right, 23 seconds, you can see the shot clock there in the middle counting down. Interesting again, this high press coming from Baradine early. Getting up close, deciding to go one-on-one, -on -one, looking to try and shut Rangatoto's space down. And now look for the entry pass, just a little bit too long, and that'll be picked off nicely by Lizzie Worth for Baradine. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Rangatoto adapt in this third quarter. Uh, Taylor Fisher's doing a great job at centre-back for Baradine, so... I think what you'll see is Bragging Toto start to look to move a little bit from, more from the outside and drive, so move in from 6 metres to 2 metres with the second player and see if they can create something that way. So, happy to go both teams at the moment, happy to play this sort of high press, but now find the player open, and it is Shula, and she has a shot, it was probably on, just didn't quite execute it right, but great enterprise being shown by Berardine. Mate, just have a look off the ball at what's going on. I always say that about water polo. A lot of the good work's been done off the ball. Just have a look at that two players at the back there. Nine for Baradine. I think it might be Gabriel. And, and in fact, it's uh, Akira Walsh for Rangitoto. As you say, as you say that, Mark, Sasha Tindall driving off the ball and earns the exclusion for Rangitoto. So now... Oh, shot comes, and this time it is another. And just like that, it is... Rangatoto, who have scored the last three goals, and now they suddenly lead by four goals to three after trailing by three goals to one. Yeah, nice execution there on that finish. There's a lane down on Lizzie Worth's right arm there, and they managed to slide it through. And Poppy Coaston, she's been good for Rangatoto. Absolutely backing up Gabriel Doyle. And now chance comes. And so, opportunity here for Berardine to hit straight back. Need to just... Need to work quickly. Open up, the big shot comes and off oh, the upright. That is again very good this time by Taylor Fisher. Plenty of power on the shot, got up nice and high. And now it is Doyle. The danger, you can see the desperation swim here from Billy Shuler. Trying to start it down, entry pass comes. Almost the equivalent of a long ball in football, but nicely picked off and read by Gemma O'Brien for Rangi Toto in the number five. Rangatoto still in possession. Oh, and that's why you should stay in school. That's why you should study physics, aerodynamics, hydrodynamics. Really close. Great long shot. Almost got it in. Mm. Now Baradine looking for the entry pass. What's the ruling? Turn over there on Holly Roberts. She's been ruled to have pushed off uh, her Rangitoto opponent. 
in terms of moving forward. Yes. It's ironic, isn't it? Because you accused of pushing off, yet someone's grabbing you and preventing you from actually moving forward. So yeah, it's exactly. sort of one of those, almost those... As the players spend more time playing the game, they learn when's the right time, and right then when the ball's arriving, if she gives her a push, it's always going to be very hard to get away with. OK, so they will come back through Billy Shuler. Shuler finds Goldsworthy. Back to Shuler. Shot clock, 11, 10 seconds on it. It'll be weird, looks for the little entry pass, but well read. Comfortably read by Raper. See Rangitoto have moved into a bit more of a zone this quarter. They're sort of holding back on those Baradine centre forwards. Now the big long pass comes, chance here, comes off the line. Nicely read again by Hayley Boyce. Cannot hesitate in those situations. Baradine, so make it two centre forwards. Oh, was it Lizzie Worth? My apologies. Lizzie Worth for Baradine, the goalkeeper, of course. Number seven for Rangi Toto is Gabriel Doyle. Oh, open opportunity, open chance here for Rangi Toto again. Oh. Baradine managed to find a way, but too good. Great athleticism. That is superb by Raper. She's been good. She's been very good. It's a big goal for Rangitoto. That two-goal lead now is, is going to be really crucial late in the game. It gives them a chance. But Baradine have had this a couple of times this week where they've been down early and they've been a really good fourth-quarter team. Yeah, Tallulah Goldsworthy there, the defender. Did everything right, but really you just put that down to a little bit of brilliance. Rangi Toto and a chance here. They really do need to try and score now, Baradine. They don't want to find themselves down by three. They've conceded the last four goals as Gabriel Duell starts to come forward again for Rangi Toto. Now, they get up on her face through Billy Shula. So Shula looking to work her over. Turnover, similar on the other end with Holly Roberts. That's another push off. So now they look to try and go long. The element of surprise. Switch play quickly. Go from right to left. The big shot does come, but well read in the finish. This time by Hayley Boyce. That's great work from Hayley to slide across the cage there. The ball's going from one side of the pool to the other. So great job to make it get across and make that save. So Doyle to Shula. So... Stevie Cooper in the number 10 for Rangi Toto. Six is Emily Lydon for Baradine. Finds Isabel Jacker. Goes back to Rianne Bryant. And what did the referee say here? Exclusion. She's fouled her and kept taking the ball away afterwards. So, and the Guilty party is Stevie Cooper. So there's a six on five opportunity here for Baradine. It's a good timeout by Jordan Milosic-Lanskini for Baradine. Five three down, 34 seconds to go in the quarter. Uh, if they can execute this, really good to bring them back just before that three quarter time mark. Baradine have played a little bit of three three today and a bit of four two. It's be interesting to see what they go with here. Um, that three threes work well, so they may give that another run. So Rangitoto College, largest school in the country. Over 3,000 students in total. Boys and girls, of course. And as possession will go the way of Baradine, they will have that six on five overlap. So they've got that man up. They have set up that 3-3, three, three, nice and wide to start with. Oh, look at the athleticism here, threatening, threatening, threatening. 
trying to draw the defenders, open it up somewhere else, and the shot has come off the upright. Good play here from Baradine. A little unlucky, but nicely worked. Rangitoto somehow survive, and Haley Boyce will come away with it for Rangitoto. And now they look to try and go long down that right-hand side for Poppy Costa. 6-5 of their own now, and another timeout, Chelsea Geary. Special mention Chelsea, she's just awarded Coach of the Year at the New Zealand Water Polo Awards a couple of weeks back. Yeah, coaching a big thing, isn't it? You've got good coaches, you generally have a good program, people are enthusiastic. One of the biggest challenges, I guess, for the sport is pool space for a lot of the schools. It's no surprise that the schools that have access or have the financial resource seem to be the schools that do do well. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it is a big issue for the sport, but we seem to be getting more and more, which is, which is a good thing. Yeah, look, it, it's about progression, isn't it? It's about letting it organically grow, and girls are sort of number nine in the world at the moment on the women's side, so I think it's top ten, potentially make it to the Olympic Games. Yeah, women are off to Berlin for the World Cup Division 2 in a couple of weeks, and that'll be a really good opportunity for them, and our under-20 women off for the World Champs in Portugal later in the year. So here we go. So we're going to Toto through. So it'll be Rangitoto. Looking to go down that right hand side. Opportunity here for Baradine. But just didn't quite pick up the ball and somehow Rangitoto survived. But it will be. Three quarter time. So Rangitoto should still, Baradine will still have a player excluded, likely at the start of this fourth quarter, um, unless they win the swim off and the sprint for the ball, in which case they'll be back to six on six. Yeah, for people that are, I guess, new to the sport of water polo, there's a little bit of an element of basketball to it in terms of sort of setting up around the perimeter and certainly the element of football as well. But like all team sports, isn't it? It's about just trying to pass into space, trying to create that space, trying to draw defenders, open up others. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of that comes from the team's movement off the ball. So whilst the action can always be on the ball, there's a lot happening off it. And yep. that's where you've got to create that space through that, yep. those movements. And we encourage people to, to just watch what is going on. So you might see the ball hander, but watch just what's going on with the centre forwards and those defenders at the back. A nice example there of those egg beater kicks that you learn from a young age. And those great players, that ability to be able to get those that kick going so they can almost get a high out of the water, get their hips out of the water, and then they've just got that trajectory to just pull the trigger on those big powerful shots and it's different to a tall fast bowler coming in. So this will be the swim off between number four for Baradine, which is Rian Bright, number three Rhea Somerville for Rangi Toto. So that's the last quarter of this bronze medal match. Once again, it's Tom Baradine who will get the ball. And they'll bring it back through Goldsworthy. Happy to then come back to Taylor Fisher. So Fisher happy to drive forward. Goes across and finds Isabel Jacker. So now pushing forward. Need to get the shot off though this time. The shot does come just a little bit wayward. So more of a, as I think you mentioned, a little bit more of a zone defence from Rangi Toto. Yeah, and you can hear Jordan over the background yelling. They want they want the players to move and take those blockers who are back in that zone defence out of the way of the centre forward. So they can either put the ball into the centre forward or going to get a better shooting angle. As you predicted, great battle between those two. They're really going at it. <laughs> so now Taylor Fisher looks at her options. Pressure being put on by Poppy Coaston. Looks for the entry pass. What do the referees say? No, all good. So just seven seconds left on the shot clock. They're going to need to go long, big long shot, and scores! Wow! Wow! Desperation stuff, shot clock pressure, and from nowhere. It wasn't a missile, it was just a lob shot that just found the back of the net, and just like that, Baradine pull one back. It's 5 4.
Those goals are really crucial in middle games like that. It's a perfect lob right to the back corner. Yeah, Rian Bryan, and you can just see the disappointment from Hayley Boyce. I'm not sure she could do too much. She was off your line, but that was, that's just natural based on how the sides were set up. So, it is certainly game on, and we're going to go to penalties. Can Baradine snatch this? Now the shot at the other end, but picked off too easy by Lizzie Worth. So, Lizzie Worth looking composed. She's been very good today. They both goalies have had really good games. It's been a low scoring grindy yeah. sort of game, and it's come down a lot for both goalkeepers. And here comes Mia Bryant. Now looks for the entry pass. Collusion against Gabby Doyle, so a 6 5 chance for Aradine. 6 5. 18 seconds on the shot clock, it's ticking down. They've got time, they look for the pass. Oh, brilliant, brilliant water polo. That is superb. That is a coach's dream. Holly Roberts this time. It's great vision by Flula Goldsworthy down on that right wing. She's brought it, moved it in, seen Holly's got the space in front of her, and bang. Great pass. Yeah, look great at this. Finish. Just beautiful balance, superb pass from Goldsworthy, finds Holly Roberts. And so, Baradine, you talked about they are a very good last quarter team. And we are starting to see that tied up at 5 4 10 remains. Bronze medal up for grabs. New Zealand Secondary Schools water polo. No, Mike, Hardy, Mike, Piki, Mike, Kaki, Mike. Hope you are enjoying the coverage here on Fakata Māori. As now Rangatoto look to try and answer it. But well read again by Lizzie Worth. You just feel that momentum's gone back the way of Baradine. Yeah, absolutely. Rangatoto will be looking for a big stop here try and stem that flow and then and get one back. So Roberts, this time, goes across and finds Bryant. It's a little bit of a wayward pass. Good pressure coming from Raper. Now another big shot comes. No, happy to just lay it off. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Another big lob this time, just a little bit wide. So good pressure defensively being put on by Rangatoto. Still a great job by Taylor Fisher at centre-back there. She's continued to front the whole game, and that's really working wonders for Baradena in their defence. So, be aware of the time up. Just over three minutes remaining. Still tied up at five. Who will be the next goal scorer? So close. And then again, Gabriel Doyle. And at what point does she just look to try and take control of this game? She is X-Factor, as is Holly Roberts here for Baradena. Lovely pass. Manages to find Mia Bryant. Mia Bryant getting worked over by Doyle. Doyle continuing to come at her. And that is the brilliance of Gabrielle Doyle. We just mentioned how much now does she look to try and take control here. Great smothering defence by Gabby. Holly Roberts got herself open in front of the goal, but her defence prevented that pass. And now, chance here for Rangatoto through Louise Ray Park. Doyle, but look at this man-on-man -man defense. Just getting up in the face, just not allowing the passes. Big long shot, and just over the top. Did she get a touch on it? Indeed, two meter. So you can see now as this game's getting, as the girls get more fatigued, you can see more of this grabbing going on. So it's going to create more exclusions as well late in the pace. So, a really good little save there from Lizzie Worth. And the Toto still in position though through Stevie Cooper. To find Doyle. Doyle is being marked by Mia Bryant in the number three. And now looks for the entry pass. Can't find it. Coming off the line, Lizzie Worth. And Baradine will come away with it. So Baradine still with the momentum. And two minutes remaining. Just over two minutes. So you mentioned it before, Mark, but if we are tied at the end of the 24 minutes, we will go to a penalty shootout. Oh, backhand, I love that little flick. I love the element of surprise, and don't underestimate just how effective it can be that time it was Isabella Jacker. Just a little backhand flick in a split second from nowhere. Now Doyle, Do we see a moment of individual brilliance from her. They are just, Mia Bryant though, just getting up in her face, just pushing her back, forcing Rangatoto still to play it out of their own half. So it's a high press type defense at the moment coming from Baradine. That 
press has really allowed them there. That shot's come from halfway, which isn't the shot you necessarily want to be taking in these dying minutes. So that's a really good job on, by Barrett in that defence to press them out. Now Holly Roberts goes, looks for the entry pass. They find it this time. Chance comes, looking for the exclusion. And they do get it, so six on five opportunity. Sasha Tindall goes to the naughty chair. Come down and back to Holly Roberts. Roberts to Bryant. Got great athleticism, hasn't she, Taylor Fisher? And this is Fisher. Does Fisher have the shot? Fisher does have the shot, but Hayley Boyce equal to the occasion. Another one of the defenders also just getting in the way, taking a little bit of the velocity off it. Wow, what a game. Just under a minute remain, 55 seconds. Who wants this bronze medal? It is Rangi Toto who looked to try and go long. And Doyle, we talked about it. We talked about the individual brilliance of Doyle. She got herself free. She went down. And I think the call was just give me the ball and I'll get the job done. And it's Rangi Toto who leads 6-5 with 49 seconds remaining. Brilliant pass here from Stevie Cooper. Yeah, it's great movement off the ball from Gibby to get herself in space there, down on the two-meter line, get the defender out of position, and then a great finish under pressure. Too. Yeah, and now timeout has been called, so it is Barradine. They might have two possessions, more than likely just the one. Very going to draw something up here. They might look to go to those two centres again. It might be one centre forward to start with, the second one moving in. Really key that they just try and find and create some space for either a lock to the centre forward, create an exclusion or a penalty, or get some open space for an outside shot. Hamish McDonald alongside of me bringing you all the expert analysis. Don't go away, folks, because we are going to bring you the bronze medal match and the boys next between the might of Hamilton Boys High School who won this title two years ago, silver medalist last year up against one of the real emerging powers in Palmerston North boys so that not too far away here on Fakata Māori special thanks to Apollo Projects, Caltex New Zealand Calm, Carbon Farming Pure Athletic and of course Baileys all of those commercial partners if you're involved in a future purchasing decision please go with them now looking to just come high, almost pulling their goalkeeper, if I can use that terminology. So Lizzie Worth looking to try and lay it off. They find Tallulah Goldsworthy. Look at the high press here from Rangi Toto. Goldsworthy. Oh, look at that. Tough now. Turns, turns, waits for the thing, but brilliantly. Is that the defining moment for Rangi Toto? Let's have a look. We've got 34 seconds on the clock, so if they can get the ball back and there's no exclusion, Berardine should get one more chance, maybe. And so it is Gabriel Doyle happy to take control. Desperation coming here from Holly Roberts. No love lost between the two. They'll shake hands at the end of it all though. And now Rangi Toto, can they make it to the clock? Counts down in the background. 15 seconds remain. Looks like a four second differential between shot clock and game clock. So it'll be a bit of a Hail Mary, you'd think, just the long pass, a little bit of a hope. Still though, Rangatoto with the shot, and that'll be it, that'll be it, that'll see it done. Rangatoto 7, Baradine 5, 6 seconds remain, and the school who are the defending champions wrap it up with that shot. That's well, Really great discipline from Rangatoto to use that ball and take all the time and create a final shot. Baradine through Goldsworthy. They know they've been brilliant throughout this. They came so close to making that gold medal match, but it wasn't enough. And Rangitoto pick up a bronze at the New Zealand Championships to go with the gold they won last year. But I tell you what, the rivalry is alive. Another powerhouse in Auckland Secondary School. Girls Water Polo has well and truly established himself, and that is Baradine. Bronze last year, fourth this year. One of the great finals, and congratulations to both teams. That was a really good game between those two teams. They really by the last couple of goals. It was really back and forth the whole way. Both teams figured it out and, and played really, really well. Well, there's always got to be one winner. and we commiserations, but we just talk about it, just such small percentages, isn't there, between first and second, third and fourth. Some nights can difference compete. The difference is a good night's sleep and a little bit of who recovered the best. And Rangitoto, though, found himself down early came back and then we saw a little bit of a momentum shift didn't we from Baradine and they looked like they were sort of in the box seat we, you talked about it at the start Gabrielle Doyle really really key in those last couple of minutes there her movement to create that goal to go 6-5 was exceptional and she was everywhere her, her work rate in that game was, was outstanding she was really present on defence 
really aggressive in transition into that counter attack and into their offense, and then everywhere distributing the ball. So Haley Boyce, Kira Walsh, Rhea Somerville, Sasha Tindall, Gemma O'Brien, Kira Convoy, Gabrielle Doyle, Louise Raper, Poppy Coaston, Stevie Cooper, Caitlin Boyce, Pippa Southcombe, Mackenzie Rogers. Congratulations, bronze medalists at the New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championships for 2023. Don't go away, folks, because up next we bring you the bronze medal match. This game could have easily been the gold medal match. It is the might of Hamilton boys up against Palmerston North, live here from Jelly Park in Christchurch. Found the place. That's a good start. Built by my great grandfather. Whoops! Running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with pumped every day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex.
Broadway, ladies and gentlemen, this downtown apartment is the perfect first property. Okay. Our vendors have a new baby, they're moving on, so we're selling this today. Do I have any more bids? One bid here, thank you. I've got a bid there. We've got one more here. Yes, we have one more bid. We have a bid here. Do we have any more final bids? This bid? isn't about just selling one on. property. It's Go about getting a better time. result for our clients. So, so we can help them with their next property, the one after that, and the one after that. Whoops, running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. No mai, hari mai, piki mai, kaki mai. Welcome in to Whakata Māori as we bring you live coverage of the 2023 New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championships. It is now the bronze medal match between the might of Hamilton Boys High School and Palmerston North Boys. Two schools with great traditions in sport. Two schools that really are now starting to challenge the dominant Auckland schools in one of the fastest growing sports. Both teams, well, good enough to have made the final. Such has been the closeness of competition. Joining me in commentary today is Cooper Stewart. Cooper, you've been across the last three days. As we look at this Hamilton Boys High School team, it's not a bad side, is it? When you look at the likes of Sam Keatley there, Christian Lee Pongai in the number four, you look at Zach Martin in goal. Yeah, they got some pretty good shooters. It should be pretty easy, even between them and Palmerston North. And then, of course, for Palmerston North Boys High School, it is Quinlan Huff, Cole Phillips, Ethan Limmer, Blake Chase, Ryan Stott, Alex Odom, Jack Aitken Cade, Jacob Booth, Sam Maletta, Ian Sui, Sam Salter, and Charlie Hook. Coach brilliantly again by Jamie Ross, and of course, Rahiti Tokote White, the coach for Hamilton Boys High School. Early on, opportunity for both coaches to get a bit of a sense of what their opponents are doing in terms of the way they're setting up their offense and also the way they're setting up their defense. Yeah, if you're Hamilton boys, you're probably looking to stop that number two from Palmerston, Cole Phillips. He's pretty aggressive with the ball, moves really well. So to stop him, what, 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 what get up in his face, press yeah, him high. Definitely, you're looking to put a, probably a couple of people on him each offense. If he's in goal, certainly playing his own. Um, but there's a couple of outside shooters that you probably don't want to leave alone either from Palmerston. So, yeah, there won't be a. There'll be. They would have possibly met each other at North Island Championships and Regional Championships, but it's not. It's not. It's not the regularity of play to necessarily know the strengths and weaknesses. You've, mm. It's. It's a little bit of a work in progress. Yeah, certainly for Palmerston, being a little bit more isolated than most other schools, no Wellington teams at this comp on the boys' side. Um, certainly harder to get the games. Mm. Yeah, and there he is for Christian Lee Pongai, big figure in the number 12 for Hamilton. Number The number 12 here for Hamilton boys is Josh Edwards, key make, playmaker for them. And so we're not too far away from those introductions as we have four quarters of six minutes. Bronze medal up for grabs. Hamilton boys high school runners up last year, narrowly losing to Rangi Toto. The year before, they won the New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championship. My understanding, the first school south of the Bombays to do that. Certainly a powerhouse. And there's been a lot of talk around the emergence of Palmerston North, who really have one of the great histories and tradition in boys' sport across so many sports. Rugby, of course. And the famous All Blacks out of it, now trying to add water polo to their rich resume. 
So we will now have the formalities that go with water polo. They're great formalities too. We'll introduce the team in white first, which is Hamilton Boys High, and then we will introduce the team in blue. So without further ado, it is the formal team introductions. So they just go through their warm-up, their final acknowledgements. It will be Hamilton Boys High School who will be playing from right to left. Palmerston North by left to right. Really looking forward to this one. It will be physical. It will be fast. Don't blink, folks. It is water polo. They score when you least expect it. Look for the little backhand flicks. Look for what's happening off the ball. Like a lot of these team sports, it's simply about trying to pass into open space, trying to draw defenders away. And a lot of pressure on both coaches. Yeah, both coaches have been here before. James Ross more recently, the Palmerston boys coming through pretty well. Raz, former New Zealand age group coach, so knows what he's doing. Both coaches are very experienced. So four quarters of six minutes. I would imagine that Palmerston North are desperately wanting this one. Hamilton have become just such a powerhouse across so many sports now that like anybody when they become that big, they're the team everybody wants to knock off, they're the team everybody loves to hate. No different in Auckland, no different to some of the schools in Christchurch, of course. Hamilton Boys High School couple of weeks ago, losing the famous Marty Cup in rowing by one five hundredths of a second against the Midas St. Beads and again just demonstrating how good they are, current New Zealand first 15 rugby champions as well Palmerston Northwell 
Pulse and Banner in rugby, Napier Boys High School, big rival. Not a very good sportsman have come out of both schools, so this is the swim off. High arm turnover fast, and it will immediately go the way of Hamilton Boys High School, and they won't be afraid to come up through Elijah Singleton. Oh, but picked off nicely read there by Ethan Limmer. So Limmer happy to drive forward down this right side. Getting back desperately in defence is George Oliver for Hamilton Boys High School. Plenty of space out on this right hand side. Lovely little pass in, but nicely worked over. Good defence being shown by George Oliver for Hamilton. And now it's Hamilton. First opportunity they get. Great skill set. Being shown by Cole Schmidt. Go across to the far side. Big shot going to come. Plenty of hands up. A lot of energy being burnt trying to get that high using that kick. And big shot does come. And it's wide though. But Hamilton Boys High School showing the early initiative. Shot coming through Elijah Singleton. Bit of patience on that 6 5 as well. Nice use of the whole clock. Having a shot in the last second. Yeah, and that will become important towards the end of the game, depending on where you are. You're clearly wanting the clock to slow down if you're trailing, but if you're leading, we're doing the maths too. Big effort comes, great block from Sam Keatley for Hamilton Boys. We'll be saying that name a lot, he'll be everywhere in this game. So it is Cole Schmidt, and now through George Oliver to Schmidt. And worked over by Cole Phillips for Palmerston North Boys High School in the number two. So just sort of sitting back in a more zone type defense, Palmerston North. That's just turned over too easy. So chance here for Palmerston North through Cole Phillips. Now, what's Phillips got out to his left? He's surveying his options. He's got Ian Sui out to the right. He decides to go. Just a little bit of a wayward pass. Too easy for Hamilton Boys High School goalie, Zach Martin. Find Sam Keatley there. Earning the ejection. Nice move. Yep, so six on five opportunity here for Hamilton. Chance to, with the overlap. Big shot does come. Too close, too far, too strong. And it is Cole Schmidt who opens the scoring in this bronze medal match. Hamilton Boys High School by leading by one goal to nil. Yeah, opting for the press there against Sam Keatley. A strong centre forward. Earning the ejection. Cole made it look too easy. He gets nice and high, doesn't he? You can't underestimate just how hard that is to get that high with the kick. And just manages to get up over the top of Cole Phillips. So, Hamilton not afraid to be aggressive. Get up in the face of the Palmerston North boys team. Nice pass. Play with speed. Lovely little entry pass. Draws the exclusion. So now Palmerston North with the 6-5 overlap. Strong centre forward, Jacob Booth. We go across, switching play, trying to draw the defenders. Good zone defence here from Hamilton. Now the big shot does come off the upright. Another shot at it. This time he does score. So Palmerston North bounce straight back through Alex Odom. It's good shooting there from the number six. Having a second crack at it. Not afraid to go again after missing the first. Yeah, Zach Martin got up. Just reaction time from that close. Very hard for the keepers. Special thanks to Bailey's Real Estate too. If you are looking at selling a property, do check out the team at Bailey's. Now, entry pass. Nicely read. Beautifully done here by Hamilton playing with just a real level of urgency. And the shot coming from George Oliver, but just over the top. A little, little bit forced there. A little bit more patience like the 6-on-5 we saw earlier. So still tied up at one. Ethan Limmer. And turnover possession, so Hamilton will come away with it. Pushing forward. They'll go right across the far side, looking for that little pass. Happy to just come back. Roll through Elijah Singleton. Singleton now switches across to the far side, looking for entry pass to Sam Keatley. 
but well read, well picked off by Jack Aitken K for Palmerston North. Sui, now goes to Cole Phillips, and chance comes, oh that's good, but final pass, just couldn't quite execute it right, certainly created the space, created the room. Oliver, got to be careful because coming at him was Ethan Limmer. Happy to just go deep at the perimeter. Big shot, shot, just an absolute cannon of a shot. Man, Miles Jolie, and he just pulled the trigger on that. Seeing something we couldn't, found the hole and made that look very easy. A couple of pump fakes, good to go. Goalie sitting a little bit deep in his cage there. leading Palmerston North, chance again good defence being shown that's really really good defence being shown by Sam Keatley, both ends of the pool quality player and the Hamilton boys looking to try and extend it to three goals to one they came down the left hand side through Cole Schmidt but turn possession over so Palmerston North it's an off the ball situation not going on off the ball. If you just look at the top of your screen, you can just see it, just how physical it is. Gladiatorial by nature. Wonderful game. So now, Cole Phillips. Great entry pass. Shot comes. Superb piece of goalkeeping from Zach Martin. Great positioning. Nice aggressive on the ball. Really piece of good goalkeeping. So we'll come away with that corner type situation. And it will be... Jack Aitken K for Palmerston North, but high press defense coming from Hamilton. Now they look to go quickly. Palmerston North, the element of surprise, switching play. It's good from Jacob Booth, drawing the pressure and earning the ejection. Now they find the shot. The pump fake again off the upright whistle had gone though. Turnover. Two-hand defense in the in the middle of the six on five there. Yeah, so that is what's the stuff that's happening off the ball. And our two referees today, Tom Jones, Jack Diamond. Oh, I like him. He's good, Cole Phillips. He's everywhere. Doing a really good job of just preventing Cole Schmidt from being the target. And that's in a forward position for Hamilton boys. And these two just going at it. And there's the big long shot, a little bit wide, certainly had the power on it. And that'll bring the first quarter to an end, or is that the first timeout? I think it might be the first timeout, is it? It's the end of the first quarter there. End of the first quarter, there you go. So end of the first quarter, and then there's Hamilton Boys High School by leading by two goals to one over Palmerston North Boys. What's your take here? What, what, what's the message from both coaches, Rahiti um, to Kote White, you can see here for Hamilton Boys? Probably both teams, if I was... Coaching either team, I'd probably look to get the ball into centre forward more often. Palmerston are getting quite a good, quite a lot of good use out of their centre forward. Um, and Hamilton may be a bit more patient to get the ball into centre forward. The same thing, put the ball in because the referees are awarding the centre backs exclusions, but just more frequency. Mm, and the coach for Palmerston North Boys High School is James Ross. What will James be saying here? Probably in the in the lanes a little bit higher in the wings. The ball's coming down into the wings and into centre forward. If I'm looking at Palmy's defence, you've got to stop that ball coming in because Cole's doing such a good job in centre back, pressing pressing the centre back uh, centre forward. Sorry. So second quarter about to get underway. Palmerston North boys in the blue, Hamilton boys high school in the white. powerhouse in secondary school sport at Hamilton two of the great traditional schools and boys sport in the North Island rich histories and traditions so the swim off will involve five there's Ryan Stock six is George Oliver and it will be Hamilton Boys High School 
who will look to try and come forward and they'll immediately go through Elijah Singleton. He's going to keep pushing forward Singleton. Does he go on his own? Oh, he does have a shot and just comes off the upright. But shooting from distance. And again, interesting. Quinlan half almost caught napping, but it wouldn't have been his fault. Salter looks for the entry pass there. They work over. Intended target was Jacob Booth. And so it'll be a six on five opportunity here for Palmerston North. They do have the overlap. Can they execute here? And the shot comes. Maybe a wasted opportunity. Do they need to just be that little bit more patient. So both first positions of that quarter. Both teams have switched to a single man zone. I think Hamilton without Sam Keatley in the middle have done really well there. Oh, great pass. Lovely entry pass. Great athleticism being shown by Sam Keatley. Just couldn't quite get the balance to put the velocity on it that he was hoping for. But certainly great enterprise. Really good water polo from Hamilton as we see Charlie Hook pass the North boys. Back through Jack Aitken Cade. And now, another exclusion. So, six on five. And the player excluded for Hamilton was George Oliver. They need to capitalise here, though. They've had their chances. They've had their six on five. Oh, brilliant piece of keeping from Zach Martin. Got his big mid out. But still, goes the way. Hamilton. And the shot does come. Superb. Superb. Really good water polo from Palmerston North. Just couldn't quite get the job done. Jack Aitken K, the intended receiver. Really nice little entry pass here from the number 12, Charlie Hook. Found his intended receiver. Once again, Zach Martin, very, very good in goal. And now the exclusion, so it'll be Hamilton Boys High School, who will be six on five. Oh, superb, brilliant. Cole Schmidt, lovely little switch of play, was open on that left-hand side. Quick thinking, Hamilton Boys High School extending that lead. Really great vision there being shown by Miles Julian. Yeah, he really had the choice of options there. You'll see here the ball come across. Keatley could have grabbed it. Went one further to Cole and finished similar to the first quarter. Good finish. So now, Palmerston North boys really need to be the next team to score. There's not, it was never going to be much in this game. Three goal, bu three goal buffer. Then you start to sort of live rent free in your opponent's heads. And don't underestimate the psychology that goes on, particularly at the secondary school level. And lovely pass again. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Cole Schmidt just goes in there, finds Sam Keatley. And this is just a coach's dream. You look at Schmidt. In fact, it was just that one-two, wasn't it? So it was Keatley to Schmidt, Schmidt to Keatley. And look, they just automatically drew the defender, which opened up Keatley. Really good water polo. It was a good move from Sam Keatley. Here you go. I've got to say, I like the look of Zach Martin in goal. He's a big man. He gets up nice and high. Seems to have a really good sense of space. See how far 40 sucks. That's probably the cutting off the angle that you're looking at. Okay, and go across that side. This time picked off nicely red. He's been good, Cole Phillips. Really good for Palmerston North Boys height. Off the ball turnover there. And don't go away, folks, because following this, we'll have our gold medals game amongst our secondary school girls and very much an all Auckland final between the two traditional powerhouses St Cuthbert's and Diocesan. As we now see Palmerston North desperately trying to score here. They've had their chances. It's just been great defence and superb play from Zach Martin. 
Hamilton now. Come away with it from Josh Edwards. Back to their keeper, Zach Martin. Now Martin happy to push it down to the right-hand side. Hamilton now come forward in numbers. Look how physical it can be. That's great. Aidan Waters and Jacob Booth for Palmerston North. Opportunity, but whistle had gone. So the goal won't count. It was the right idea. Good positive water polo from Hamilton. The Ian Seary's been very good too for Palmerston North. And this is the chance they're looking for. Just couldn't quite handle it. What do the referees say? Penalty there. So it will be a penalty. And now, real chance to step up here. Cole Phillips to try and bring it back to just the two goal difference. But he's going to have to get past a very, very impressive Zach Martin. Zach Martin, look at him. He can just wait his time. He's timing. Goal taken really quickly, left hand side. And just like that, it's 4 2. I tell you, if Palmerston North can score next, then you sense there will be a momentum shift. Yeah, you really need to not let them get away too early. Nice and quick from Cole. He yeah, didn't muck around, did he? No. Really hard. Got just a, not, even, well, not even a split second to think about it. So, again, thank you to Bailey's for their support. Caltechs, of course. Apollo projects come across and now they come away with it through Alex Odom Odom goes across finds Phillips Phillips now looking hoping hoping does he shoot no oh, good defense brilliant from Hamilton boys again Miles Julian superb it really was doubling him the whole time you can see what a threat he can be now Cole Schmidt for Hamilton looks for the little entry pass. Well read this time by Palmerston North. But we will see the we see the exclusion. I think we do. So there's six on five situation again. Again, Keatley in centre forward earning that. Oh, another big power shot. And another one. And Hamilton boys go up by five goals to two. And again, they do it from the edge of the perimeter. Just sitting back, aren't they? Not pressing high. And just allowing George Oliver just too much time. Manages to get it between a wall of defenders and his own players. And that'll take us to half time. Hamilton Boys High School leading Palmerston North Boys by five goals to two. I will get you, Cooper Stewart, to sum up that first half. It was really good from Hamilton. Down both ends of the pool, the goalie making a couple of Pretty large blocks on their six on five. Palmerston really looking to force it into the centre forward. More dynamic movement is probably probably on the cards in this team talk. And a good finish. A couple of good finishes from Cole Schmidt there in the wing. I love this goal here. Really nicely worked. Just drew. The defender from Palmerston North, which was Sam Mock, Sam Maletta. And Maletta was all over Keatley initially. And then he had no choice but to come forward to Cole Schmidt. Schmidt then went straight back to Keatley and just like that, scored a very, very good goal. Really tough on the defenders at times. Finding those gaps when the six on five, the goalie has to move so much when the ball goes from wing to wing. Hamilton doing a good job of moving the ball and then finishing well. Yeah, a lot of the work is done off the ball, which creates opportunities, and so a lot of names are often we jump up and we shout from the goal scorers or those that provide the assist, but a lot of the work is done by the other players drawing the defenders or preventing the defenders closing down the gaps closing down the angles so set for the third quarter of this 2023 New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo bronze medal match between the might of Hamilton Boys High School and that of Palmerston North Boys
such an expectation on all of the top sports teams at Hamilton Boys. Not a school that they want to be in the contest, they want to be in the fight. And it will be Palmerston North who come away with it. And immediately they go through Ethan Limmer. Ten is Ian Sui. Sui being pushed back hard and aggressive by Elijah Singleton. A bit going on off the ball and so it will be advantage the way of Palmerston North. They really do need to score now though. They need to be the first team to score. And the shot does come. We talk about the need to be thing. And plenty of power. Plenty on that, and Alex Odom gets the job done. Palmerston North Boys High School hit back, 5-3 the score. Yeah, that was really well needed. Good from Alex. Patient in the middle. Wait for the goal there to come up and put it the other way. Yeah, I think Josh Edwards there. You can see it's the frustration in that centre-back position, just thinking, yeah, needed to maybe get up on that man-on-man -man defence. But then you open yourself up with the centre-forward. Turn over there, ball under. Okay, so Palmerston North, have they got a momentum shift? Here goes, opportunity comes, opportunity comes. Can he score? Do they drag him down? Keep an eye, what do the referees say? So, just a minor foul. So, no exclusion. So, Zui gets to the cross, lovely entry pass, turns and shoots, and just wide. Really good again from Palmerston North, showing plenty of enterprise, whatever's been said at half time. And just changing things up a little bit. Looking to go a little bit wide, then through the middle. Now, Hamilton boys, let's have a look at the way Palmerston North have set themselves up defensively. They're still opting for a full press. I mean, when Keatley's not in centre forward, it's probably a little bit easier to do. As soon as he drives into the centre, they really want to come back and help on him. Been earning exclusions all over the place. For Sam Keatley. Oh, good, good hit from Palmerston. Real good, quick use of the ball. The big shot does come, but I think it might have been Josh Edwards that just got in the way, and then Zach Martin, who's been brilliant in goal for Hamilton, shutting that attacking opportunity down. They'll come back through Sam Keatley. Keatley getting manhandled by Cole Phillips. No love lost between those two. Nice pass. Chance here for Hamilton to extend that lead out to three. Big shot does come. Another mitt gets on it. Good piece of keeping this time. Really nice by Quinlan Huff for Palmerston North boys. Great piece of goalkeeping. Quality young man. It'll be Phillips though. He looks to drive forward. Now I look for the entry pass down the middle. Dragging him under. Exclusion. Six on five. We'll go the way here of Palmerston North. The backhand. We talk about that at the start. Expect the unexpected on water polo. That little backhand flick. So dangerous. Now Hamilton though. Can they shift the momentum back in their favour? Through the left side. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Happy to be patient on the edge of the perimeter. They have been very effective from going long. But again, Cole Phillips gets up. Time out there from Palmerston. How strategic is this time out and why did he call it now? We're about halfway through the quarter, probably looking to get some fresh legs in. A couple of players lost their caps. <laughs> and we shouldn't underestimate that either. It's been a really busy three days. They've played a lot of games. This is one of the toughest sports aerobically. There's also the physical component of it. And you'll see, particularly in that fourth quarter, the fatigue level's kicking in. A little bit more niggle, a little bit more leaning on each other, a little bit more recovery. A lot of stuff going on off the ball. What I love about this sport, it's so physical, and it can be really, really niggly. But the moment it's over, they shake hands, and there's a lot of camaraderie, and it's almost, well... Yeah, but you grab it, you scratch. That's just part of the game, isn't it? Yeah, totally. It's a little bit of a war when you go into the pool. But I've never seen anybody sort of hit out in real anger at any point. Of course, the most famous game of water polo, 1956, played between Russia and Hungary after the two countries had just been to war. And 
that was known as blood in the water. Such was the physicality of it. By the end of the game, the water was basically red. And I know it's an area of the game that referees internationally are trying to do a little bit more. Just trying to calm it down a little bit, but it is a big part of the game. A few recent rule changes has probably helped help that. But it's got an element of everything. There's an element of rugby and an element of basketball, football, almost futsal and soccer. Then the shot comes, and the goal comes. And so, Palmerston North Boys High School, we talk about the momentum shift. Suddenly it is 5-4. As we go back here and have a look on the Caltex replay, again, Cole Phillips once again. Good defence here from Elijah Singleton, but just look at Phillips. Look how high he gets and just how hard that is to use that level of leg extension, that level of power to get that high out of the water. Very dynamic player and showing it there, really, Cole. Five four. Stayed two minutes remaining in this third quarter. Gold medal match later on will be in the boys will be the might of Sacred Heart in Auckland up against Tauranga. And now Zui looks for the little entry pass. Nicely done. Looking for a little bit of athleticism there. The intended target was Jacob Booth. Couldn't quite get onto it. And Zach Martin came off his line nicely and shut any angle down. So now Cole Schmidt for Hamilton Boys. No, oh, well read, really nicely picked off in the finish by Jack Aitken Cade. So I think Christian Pongai might have come into the game for Hamilton Boys High. Living in the lane right in the middle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Another. Good effort from Ethan Limmer using again that element of surprise. He's a physical player, Christian Lee Pongai. And Alex Odom sitting nice and high on Josh Edwards. This is Pongai. Oh, a lovely entry pass from Pongai. Can they get the shot? Oh, brilliant piece of keeping. Superb from Quinlan Huff. Good defence, scrambling defence. Yeah, it was. Again, opting for the press. And Sam Keatley's in centre forward is a little bit optimistic, I would have thought. Earning ejections. Oh, backhand. Big, long entry pass. Intended receiver was Jack A. Kincaid. Just turned on a dime, didn't he? The old pirouette, 360, bang. But Zach Martin, equal to the occasion for Hamilton as Pongai now brings it forward like to see him get more involved he's got such a big physical presence Pongai another strong move from Keatley so just five seconds remain in this third quarter Hamilton Boys High School five Palmerston North Boys High School four just six minutes remain and what has been a titanic encounter of just some wonderful water polo, real sense of athleticism and some physicality. And so now it's a case here of both coaches, Rahiti to Kote White for Hamilton Boys and James Ross for Palmerston North to set the strategy to determine the strengths and weaknesses of their opponents. a good 2-0 quarter there from Palmerston to get up. Well needed coming from behind there. A couple of fractured bit, bits of play of water polo really let them get ahead. Just looking at the size of some of these Hamilton boys. They might have stolen a couple of basketball players. Well, it is, isn't it? I mean, you look at the powerhouses of sort of Eastern Europe and those traditional European powerhouses, they are just big, big men, aren't they? 
and they wouldn't look out of place locking down an all-black scrum. It is about physicality. That's not to say that the smaller players can't have a point of view, can't have a, a role, but yeah, it almost seems at the highest level. Sort of six-foot-eight monsters. Totally. One of the best players, Manuel Estiati, back in the 70s. Very small player. Yeah, oh, look, absolutely. I mean, you've just got to... You know, sometimes that just suits a certain style, doesn't it? And coaches then have to go, well, what have I got? So do I build a game plan around the way I want to play it or do I build a game plan around the skill set and the physicality of the players that I have? 100%. As we now have the swim off between Sam Keatley, number two, Cole Phillips, so two of the big, big names in secondary schools water polo. About to go toe-to-toe. Palmerston North will be wanting to try and hit them early, bring it back to five, and just put a bit of pressure on Hamilton boys. See how they cope with a bit of adversity. It's always the thing at schoolboy level. How do teams cope when they're behind? And sometimes how do favoured teams cope when they're behind? It's one thing that Rangatoto girls did very well last year against Diocesan in the final, where Diocesan probably win as the favourites. Rangatoto got up early and they ended up winning that final. And so don't underestimate the psychology of it all at this level. Yeah, I mean, Hamilton losing number six on his third exclusion in that quarter. Goal scorer from earlier. And two referees, Tom Jones, Jack Diamond. Refereeing's been excellent. Cooper Stewart's been superb throughout the tournament. Oh, that's you. <laughs> no, he's been very good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, special thanks to, to Caltex. If you are needing to fill up and you're a water polo fan and follow up, Make sure that you do um, go to a Caltech station again if you're looking at selling real estate or property. Check out the team at Bailey's. Acknowledge their support. And of course Apollo there in the background. Wonderful things they do in the pool space. They've recently just finished that pool up in Napier. Yeah. Napier? Gisborne. Jack Diamond there. New Zealand's leading referees. Across the other side there is um, Tom Jones. So six minutes. This is the fourth quarter. So, I always like to say, 18 minutes of hope, 6 minutes of truth. And now we get into that phase. Hamilton boys, they score really here. How do Palmerston North react? It's been close. So in that last girls game, it can go right down to the wire. Yep, so now... And this is when they need to start then bringing in their experienced players who are looking to try draw it in that diamond formation. They've been good with the little entry passes at times. This Cole Phillips, brilliant. He's been superb, Phillips. And big shot, big cannon. Zach Martin, though, off his line. Gets up nice and high out of the water. Shouldn't underestimate the lactic acid build-up, the energy used to do that as we now see Sam Keatley. Keatley. They're calling for it. Goes across, finds Taylor Crouch. So Crouch, happy to look, looking for the entry pass, doesn't find it. Might have to go from distance. Really good defence being played here by Palmerston North in the middle, trying to shut the forwards down. And a bit of a cheeky shot coming from Keatley. Saw the door slightly ajar on that right hand side. But Quinlan Huff had it covered. Don't expect to start to see a few more of these outside shots as the don't want to sit there. off don't want to sit off too much they are sitting off Hamilton but loses it it's the lack of concentration or fatigue probably more from Charlie Hook now the little entry pass does come but well read and it will be position the way of Hamilton so nicely done again from Sam Keatley over Ethan Limmer who was the intended receiver in another three cap four Palmerston North Boys High School Now, Josh Edwards, lovely little pass, finds Keatley. Keatley goes on as well. Keatley too good from here, but just couldn't quite get enough on it. 
I'd imagine by his own high standards, probably be disappointed with that, but really good from Quinlan Huff again, just coming off the line, shutting those angles down. Oh, the second best option is a two metre and another chance. Look at what's going on in the middle of the pool, and oh, that is brilliant. That is brilliant from Josh Edwards. He just had that sort of pump fake, didn't he? But really good work being done off the ball here in the middle. Right there, the two defenders being drawn into the middle. And that just opened the door. I think it might have been TK Jeffries for Hamilton Boys who was in the middle. And Hamilton, timeout call. So 6-4, timeout call. They will have a man up here as well. Exclusion on Cole Phillips, number two, for not stepping back. Hamilton will be looking for a goal here to put this... A little bit further from... Yeah, well, you'd think that three would be too much of a mountain to climb with four minutes remaining. Yeah. Palmerston North, though, if they can hit back here now, and they do need to be the next team to score, they're capable. They're going to use Bill just very much around Cole Phillips, Ethan Limmer. Jacob Booth's been good. Don't need to take too many risks here. No, so... I mean, Hamilton Boys High School at some point are actually going to then have the advantage of the clock as well, aren't they? Where they can take the 30 seconds and do the maths in their head in terms of positions. So happy to just go left and right, play around the perimeter. Look at that, just trying to draw the defenders, open the door, and there it is. You'd have to say that's it. So Cole Schmidt for Hamilton Boys High. Really nicely worked, patient build up. Went from right to left, and you just sort of see here Palmerston North just sitting back, zone-type defence, not pressing high, and that just created plenty of time, plenty of opportunity. Cole Schmidt, too good. Is that Cole for the third time? Seen that twice before. Oh, and then at the other end, they bounce straight back, so they shut the gap back down to two. So it's still game on. Jack ain't getting Cade in the middle. I should take my own advice. You ever have the commentators curse and make out that something's going to happen because often the opposite happens. <laughs> and so it is still game on. Good for Jack. Yeah. Now Palmerston North can hit him now, but here goes Hamilton again. Now, interesting, let's see how Palmerston North set themselves up defensively here. Do they sit back or do they press? Starting to press a little bit higher. Keatley up top, going to put the pressure on. Yep. And they are... Got to be careful, don't want the six on five. Keatley, they know what a danger he is. So Alex Odom all over him. Six versus thing, shot comes. Good really nicely done by Quinlan Half now. They'll go the other end, so that's good. Chance here. Can he turn and shoot? Does he have the opportunity to go? He does. Oh, brilliant from Zach Martin. Wow, that is good goalkeeping. Another good save. Great save. Jack was a bit unlucky there in the open water not to get the finish. Oh, big cannon of a shot too. And so another exclusion coming. So six on five, Palmerston North still have the ball. Chance to take this to seven, six and put the real pressure on Hamilton. Within just over two minutes would be remaining. Now... Looking, they've got opportunity, but this time the Hamilton defence too good. They get up nice and high. Josh Edwards back there. And what is the call here? So number three excluded. Off the ball, holding back. So you'll note that Cole Phillips, number two from Palmerston, was also on his third ejection previously. Oh, another shot, another goal. And that lead now goes out to three. This time, TK Jeffries. The trigger man in the middle and the number nine. And we look at the Bailey's replay. He's good again. Patient, taking his time. 
fact it was number 12, Josh. so it was Josh Edwards. TK Jeffries doing a lot of work just off the ball to draw the defender. So well done to you, Josh. And would have taken the most of their, their shooting from the out, out the top today. Yeah, 221 remains. Chance now for Thomas and North. And turnover goes the way of Hamilton. So putting the ball under, was he? Yeah, exactly. You're not allowed to sit on the ball in terms of preventing your defenders from taking the ball from you. You want to push it under. Tough job refereeing too. So many little things that are happening off the ball. The ability to see it. No, oh, this is good defence. Really nicely done by Jacob Booth. And now they look to go long. Desperation stuff. It starts to get to that time where they're just going to have to take their chances. They're not going to have the shot clock on their side shortly. Simple mathematics. Now coming forward now, they go to Ian Sui. Sui. Does he pump fake? Does he look to shoot? Oh, it was there. It was there. Just couldn't quite get up. Fatigue starting to kick in. And Josh Edwards comes away with it for Hamilton. And now they look to try and go long at the other end. Did they go through Keatley? And another exclusion. So six on five. Another good move from Keatley. Yeah, he, he just draws players, does he? Such a danger, such a complete player. Uh, chance. Oh, too easy in the finish. And that is fatigue, I think. Now just starting to kick in a little bit here. Such has been the physicality of it. But Josh Edwards, the goal scorer, really nicely worked here from Mickey Joyce. Just casual. And you do have to feel a little bit for Quinlan Half. He did so much and just didn't quite get enough on it. And it just almost dribbled into the goal. And so it's Hamilton Boys High School leading Palmerston North 9-5 with just over a minute remaining in this New Zealand Secondary School's bronze medal match of the 2023 New Zealand Water Polo Championships. It was a good strong move from Josh Edwards. Pass and keep moving forward into the space. Did all the hard work before the ball came in. remaining you can see it in the background there so Palmerston North can't really win it from here so really it's an opportunity to gain some valuable experience and can't underestimate just how much they've played now look at them just pressing everybody forward now and bringing Quinlan half right out and now a little entry pass turns but Palmerston North happy at the moment to give the exclusion away they know they've got the shot clock on their side and it's another good example there by Aidan Waters in the number two cap for Hamilton. And they turn it over. So they turn that six on five into their advantage. And now looking again. Oh. Good penalty there. Keatley yeah. in position. Yeah, well, I mean, Keatley was always going to score from there, wasn't he? They had no choice in that situation. So just to take it out to 10-5. Just got away from Palmerston North Boys High in this final quarter. Maybe the difference just has been fatigue levels, depth of your squad, perhaps. You know, individuals can win your game, squads win your championship, and there we go. Oh, he missed it. So, somewhat uncharacteristic. And Palmerston North get away with one, but just 20 seconds do remain. And so now, Palmerston North, well, it's more about salvaging another goal. Have a nice long shot here. Yeah, nine seconds remain. And now Hamilton boys can just run the clock down here. And they know that they've got this. They know they're going to win a bronze medal. Silver last year, champions two years ago. And Hamilton boys high school win bronze in 2023 over Palmerston North boys by nine goals to five in a very exciting, very physical game of water polo. Through the first three quarters of the game, it was even. But in that last quarter, Hamilton coming away with it. And so they win it. The bronze medal, they are the third best secondary school in the country in 2023. Some final thoughts here from Cooper Stewart. Yeah, it was really good from both teams. Palmerston sort of let the game slip away a little bit earlier than they probably would have liked. Keep the pressure on. So congratulations to Zach Martin, Aidan Waters, Taylor Crouch, Christian Lee Pongai, 
Miles Julian, George Oliver, Sam Keatley, Elijah Singleton, TK Jeffries, Mickey Joyce, Cole Schmidt, Josh Edwards, Cooper Young, their coaching staff of Rahiti, Tekote White, Rowana Patterson, and Matthew Keatley. Don't go away. When we come back, we bring you the gold medal match to determine the best secondary school girls team in the country. It is an all Auckland affair. It is the might of Diocesan up against the brilliance of St Cuthbert's. Found the place. That's a good start. By my great grandfather. Whoops! Running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with pumped every day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex.
This isn't about cameras. It's about getting a better shot. So you can get a better result. A great photo of your property is more important than a picture of our agent. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah. Feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. No mai, hari mai, piki mai, kaki mai. Welcome to Christchurch for the New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championships. It is Jelly Park, and now it is the gold medal match between the two powerhouses of New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo, the two schools that have the greatest legacy. The might of St Cuthbert's up against Diocesan, very much the battle of Mount St John, the little volcanic mountain that separates the two schools in Auckland, literally only a kilometre apart. It's been a very very tough tournament these two schools have both had their little jittery moments in reaching this final but both deserve to be here St Cuthbert's well you've only got to have a look at that lineup with the likes of Zoe Knight Bella Knight Holly Dunn Emerson Styrus don't underestimate her big playmaker in at the number seven and joining me in commentary today will be Hamish McDonald Hamish we talk about St Cuthbert's and then you look at the Dio lineup that on paper is an outstanding young side Kuramaki, it's really good to be here. It is indeed. Um, both these teams are exceptionally well matched up and down the pool. They've played three times this year. St. Cuthbert's have won two. And then Dio won the North Island Championships for their first one of the season. So it's going to be an absolute cracker today. Yeah, Casey McDowell, older sister Morgan McDowell. You've got Isabella Dalton in there as well. You look at it too. And Ali Millard. And so a team that finished second last year, went in his favourites, ended up losing to Rangitoto. Well, they'll want to right the wrongs from last year. So the scene is set, gold medal up for grabs. Both schools wanting to add to their rich history and legacy when it comes to girls' secondary school water polo. It'll be four quarters of six minutes. It's fast, it's physical, it requires a huge amount of aerobic strength, but also a lot of mental toughness. Not too far away from the formal introductions, one of the great protocols that goes with the sport of water polo.
So now they will shake hands. They will move to their respective corners. And I sound a little bit like a boxing commentator, but don't underestimate this gladiatorial sport, the nature of this. Two teams of warriors looking for the highest honour in the sport. It's a space that for a long time has been owned by diocesan. But when it comes to secondary school rivalry in Auckland, Dio St. Cuths, there is a love-hate relationship. They desperately want to beat each other. Neither school wants to lose to the other. And that adds just another compelling factor in this girls' final. Four quarters of six minutes. It'll be diocesan in the white, St. Cuthbert's in the blue. Looking forward to this one. Absolutely, Mark. It's going to be a really cracking matchup. Both teams have really strong centre forwards. So for Dio, that's Georgia Daly and Ali Millard and Erica Patterson for St. Cuths. And on the other side of that, they've both got really good centre backs. You know, Bianca Pennington, St. Cuths, Louise Macefield and Isabella Dalton for Dio. So I think that matchup in the centre of the pool is going to be a really key one. Tell you what, a lot of, lot of support for both teams, but I've got to say, Diocesan, very, very vocal to swim off. Here we go, 2023, and immediately it'll go the way of the team in blue, St Cuthbert, so they'll have the first possession. And this is the chance for both coaches, the teams themselves, to get a little bit of an understanding of how their opponents are going to set themselves up defensively. Also, how they're going to set themselves up offensively. So, number six for St Cuthbert is Holly Dunn. And looking to try and get in there. Finds Kayla Casco and straight away it is St. Cuthbert who hit early and hit them hard early. And that's what you've got to do against Diocese and try and get in front of them. See how they deal with adversity. That's something that Rangatoto did last year to great effect. Really nice little entry pass here. Finds Kayla Gasco And too good. And Geneville just couldn't get across in goal. And so St. Cuthbert's lead early. And that's the other thing, isn't it? St Cuthbert's, they'll be wanting to try and take the crowd out of this, and it's a very, very loud vocal support for Diocesan. It is led by their, by their second team, Dio, who are also here, but big chance. To draw the daily at the centre forward there, but no luck. Yeah. You've got to hurt them last year losing that final, but sometimes you've got to learn how to lose to learn how to win. You've got a wonderful succession plan, Diocesan, but it's St. Cuthbert's again. Lovely, another little entry pass. Exclusion comes, does it? It does indeed. Vita so, Yarrow six Stevenson. on five. First overlap opportunity here for St. Cuthbert's. Had the early momentum. Happy to just play it round. The top through Holly Dunn in the number six. Nine here is Patterson. And now the big shot comes. Great block. Brilliant piece of goalkeeping from Jenna Veal. Boy, that is a statement save. Huge save in the context of this game, even though we're only, what, a minute and a half into it. Yeah, that's a really good save from Jenna. The block was slightly out of position there. Emerson Cyrus, the shooter, doing a really good job of moving into that space. But that's an exceptional save by Jenna to come across and get there. Yeah, and a lot of time, watched Emerson Cyrus over the years. Quality, quality player. Really just starting to come into her own. And so now it is diocesan. A little bit wayward, but we've seen players score from those positions but at the moment the momentum is very much with St Cuthbert's Diocesan just haven't really had a chance because we're seeing St Cuthbert's another shot comes whistle went though turnover foul on the centre forward there they just deem pushing it off. holding the centre back back ok so off the ball stuff so you could hear the whistle go before the shot and now Diocesan so really interesting to see that St Cuthbert's pressing high in defence now chance here for Yuta Yarrell Stevenson in the number six big shot could have been effective too sometimes it's the shots where the pace is just taken off that can be the most effective it's hard for the timing of the keepers they've got to get high they've got to get that leads working and they come down the right hand side St Cuthbert so good defence being shown by Diocesan Another little entry pass coming. Good block. Brilliant turnover there from Isabella Dalton for, St. for Diocesan in the number eight. And so now Genevieve happy to go down the right-hand side. 
finds her intended receiver. Now back into the middle of the pool through Yarrell Stevenson. And the big pump fake with the shot and scores, does she? Or did the whistle go? Turnover foul, so, so the whistle went, so it doesn't count. Off that foul, Vita's got to pick it up and shoot it straight away. And she's faked that ball, so there it's four, it's a turnover. And now another exclusion, I think. Six on five, is it? It is, or is it just Yeah, it is. Yeah, six so. five. Louise Macefield excluded for Dio. Now they look to try and move it quickly, but pass picked off. So just rushing it. Got out of jail a little bit there, Diocesan. Down the player. But just a bit of a wayward pass. Cuthbert's just got to try and slow it down. Interesting, both these teams starting starting just a little bit cautiously compared to the way they normally play and you can see that's probably an element of the nerves for these young athletes yeah but at some point they've got to play their way don't they at some point they're going to have to just play with the freedom that's got them here you can't train one way and then turn up and play another so Georgia Daly there for Diocesan and now coming back down for some cuts nice pass here looking for that little entry pass and now looking for a forward to come forward. Does she look to go on herself? Do we see the big pump fake? We do. And off the crossbar. But some good enterprise being shown here by St Cuthbert's, dominating the early stages of this final. I see both teams pretty much playing a press defence so far on this one. Yeah, and what we mean by that is getting up flat, getting up on your opponent, not sitting back, not covering down necessarily a channel or a lane. And getting high and push, forcing their opponents to play further back in the pool. Now, oh, oh, backhand, brilliant, off the upright. Wow. That is, again, don't blink. That should be the motto of water polo, don't blink. It's much better offense from Dio that time. They've moved the ball around. They've got Georgia Daly holding a side. Casey McDowell's done a good job on the release and put the ball in. Yeah, they've got to go out here to play positively. They can't afford to shut up shop. Play with some freedom. Another good entry pass, but good defence being shown by Diocesan. And really nicely worked there by Georgia Daly. It's good effort from Georgia, working hard on both ends, centre forward and centre back. Yeah, busy, isn't she? And now number six is Yarrell Stevenson. I like her too. She's been busy so far in this game. But great piece of work here, coming away with it for St Cuthbert's. Here's Kayla Gaskell. Goes back, so is he Fenton in goal? So just 43 seconds remain in this first quarter. Another pass that's been picked off by Diocesan. And Louise Macefield comes away with it. Looks to try and find the intended receiver, which is number 10, Casey McDowell. And so another chance here for Dyson. The they come in waves now. Chance comes. Look to go back to the edge of the perimeter. Good defence from St Cuthbert's. But do go back around. St Cuthbert's a player excluded. So it's an extra man opportunity here for Dio. 6-5. Overlap. Then the big cannon of a shot. Big Mick comes out though from number 6 for St Cuthbert's. Holly Dunn. So really good piece of defending from Dunn. And now the big long shot, a little bit wavered, and that'll bring the first quarter to a close. So it's St Cuthbert's leading Diocesan in this New Zealand Secondary School's final by one goal to nil. It's interesting, these two teams have met in the Auckland final, which was won by St Cuthbert's, the North Island Secondary School's final, which was won by Dio. So this is sort of the trilogy and the decider for these well, two teams and the big prize as well. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's like anything, isn't it? You want to win the war, but do you want to win the battle? And this is the battle, isn't it? I mean, you can win the battle, but you want to win the war, and this is the big one. And as we just want to acknowledge Bailey's too for their support, of course, Caltex as well. Interesting first quarter. Obviously, an early goal on the post-up, so when a centre-forward player moves into one of the posts there from Kayla Gaskell, which we just saw. Um, but then after that, there was sort of bunch of half chances but nothing really from either team I think um, I think you summed it up I think it's just a sort of a real hesitation from both teams isn't there that's almost like the coaches just need to say look just go out there and play with freedom just just back yourself guys don't don't get wound up in the moment and whilst we say that we also need to credit both teams defenses they've been oh, doing brilliant. a really good job on, on slowing you know 
as I said at the start of the, at the broadcast, they've got great centre forwards, but the centre backs are doing a really good job at the moment and winning that battle. Yeah, and, and we often say, don't we, that defence will win you the big finals. You know, first, first form of offensive defence. And will also come down to the benches. Don't underestimate the level of fatigue from both teams over the three days. Played a lot of games. Individuals will win you a game, but a squad will win you the championship as we see another swim off. And it will go the way of St Cuthbert's. Both schools, sort of new market, Remu era in Auckland. Intended receiver, good water polo from St Cuthbert's, nicely read in the finish, so the intended receiver was Eric Patterson in that forward position, but really nicely read by Isabella Dalton, and here is Dalton, she looks to go down this left hand side, so a little bit of stuff going on off the ball at the moment, and that will be the exclusion, so six on five now for Diocesan. I think it's Holly Dunn's second exclusion. She's a key player for St Cuthbert, so that's a you know an advantage there to Dio. Now can they score here? The big shot does come, but good piece of goalkeeping again from Izzy Fenton. I think the defender got the hand in the way as well, but it'll still be possession go the way of Diocesan. They'll know they just need to be patient here. Good teams have that ability just to slow time down in their heads. Have that little bit of space, chance. Does she go on her own? Looks for that little pump fake. No, switches it. Goes from the other side. And now the shot will come. Oh, and just over the top. Good pressure. But good water polo from Dyson. And you just feel that they are just starting to settle down a little bit, Dio, now. And that's good discipline on that 6 5. Sinkas playing a press on the top two players that move the ball wing to wing. Yeah. Just missed on the finish. Yeah, Holly Dunn and Beatrice Cook. Rossison at the other end. We'll come back away with Georgia Daly. Now go down this left hand side. Coming back in. Isabel Dalton, does she take the chance? Little entry pass. And backhand flat to Pia Is that the momentum shift? That is good water polo. That is collectively and individually superb. Georgia Daly, the goal scorer. Can't underestimate the work of Bella Dalton there too. She was really patient with that ball. She moved up. That dragged Erica Patterson out of the way. She had to come up and block. Bang, into Georgia Daly. He's got a great finish with her backhand. So we are tied up at one goal each. Four minutes remain in the second quarter. And now St Cuthbert's looking to try and hit back. Well read, picked off nicely by Casey McDowell. And Genevieve get play back underway. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Now looking to try and come forward again through Yarrell Stevenson. And has the shot, but good block coming from Bianca Pennington. So Pennington getting up nice and high and just shutting that lane down. Turnover foul, so that's Dyson ball. And it's those little things that will frustrate coaches at times. I don't think they mind so much in that attacking zone, but... So Isabella Dalton. Finds Yarrell Stevenson. Back to Dalton. Seven seconds left on the shot clock. Big shot off the upright. But plenty of enterprise being shown. And so, as he Fenton now looks to try and go long. And so, Holly Dunn finds Emerson Styrus. I'd like to see Styrus get a little bit more involved. Shot clock running down. Now entry pass comes. Can they get the backhand away? Coming out. Diocesan retain possession. Exclusion court against Dias. A 6 5 opportunity here for St. Cuff. That's so, really good patience and discipline. Yep, yeah, so 20 seconds on the shot clock for that exclusion. 
and has the big cannon shot. And I think it might have been McDowell in the middle who might have just got in the way. Been some really good field blocking from both teams here. It's making the lives of the goalies much easier. Well, even if you can just take a little bit of velocity off, isn't it, and just take the sting out of it. So, Billy Freck up Netton. Happy to go back. Open up space, switching plate. Now looking to try and get it across. But Erica Patterson, strong in defence, brings that level of physicality for St Cuthbert's. Good solid defence from St Cuthbert's there to force a shot clock violation. So just one all. Just over a minute 40 remaining in this second quarter. Neither side really allowed to play with a lot of sort of structure or finesse. Both teams have been good. Little turnover chance here for St Cuthbert's. The door is slightly ajar. Can they capitalise? Drew a couple of defenders away. The shot is there. The lane is open. She does have a shot and scores. And that is superb. We talked about having to bring Emerson Styles more into this game. And that is a reason why. Georgia Daly almost got that steal, but then St Cuthbert's got the second chance and Emerson Styles has made them play. That's a great finish. Perfect top corner shot. There's not a lot Genevieve could do about that one. So it's St Cuthbert who lead now by two goals to one. Yeah, did everything she could, Georgia Daly, to get up, but just a little bit. Just couldn't shut the gap down enough. And now Dalasasun, they want to hit back here. And I wonder what the message is as we start to come towards half time. How did Dalasasun try and shift momentum here? Just probably more being through patient, go through their structures. Oh, looks for the little lob over the top. Almost gets away with it too because Lizzie Fenton was just a little bit off her line. So now it goes through Bella Knight for some Cuthbert's. Continuing to push forward. Has the shot. It's never going to be strong enough for the quality of Genevieve. But possession goes the way of St Cuthbert's. Take it back to the edge of the area. Entry pass, looking for the little backhand, looking for the little flick. Shut down nicely in the middle of the pool. The intended receiver, Bianca Pennington. And now Dias has come away with it. Driving, bringing it forward is Yita Yarrell Stevenson. Does she go on her own? Good defence coming back from Rose. And it's at Chino D score. And it's 2 all. That's great work from Vita to pick that ball up off the turnover. She's put the foot down on the counter attack and then stayed really composed here. The defenders have come around her. Rose Lex has done a good job, but then just a little flick lob. Well, it's that precision, it's that ability to be able to make that decision under pressure to say, you know what, the shot is not the big one, the shot is just the little lob shot, and as we see another shot at the other end, almost one of desperation as we count down, and as we hear the half-time hooter, so it is St Cuthbert's 2, Diocesan 2, the Battle of Mount St John, which is a little volcanic peak, which sits basically between both schools, sort of Newmarket, One Tree Hill areas of Auckland in Remuera, and... One is the Auckland champion, one is the North Island champion, who will become New Zealand schools champion. And if we have a look there at Gabby Oliapu, what will Gabby be saying? I think they'll be really relatively happy with their defence. They've conceded an early post up in the first 30 seconds of the match and then a really nice long outside shot from Emerson Styrus. Two goals and a half at this level was absolutely fine. I think for them it's going to be the key is going to be unlocking their offence. You know, they've got two good centre forwards. How do they bring Ali Millard, potentially, who we haven't seen a lot of yet, into play as a second centre forward? And how do they get the ball to Georgia Daly, number seven, who's been doing a great job of holding position um, for them? I think that's going to be the key to Dyer's offence in the second half. Yeah, this is really nice play, isn't it, from new to Yarrell Stevenson. It is a really nice, classy finish, especially under pressure like that. And it's interesting that, you know, both teams, they're using the ball really, really well on their offense. They're being really patient and disciplined, and that's really impressive at this level. It's easy in a national final for young athletes to start rushing things, start pushing it too fast, throwing the ball away. But both teams have done a really good job of looking after their position and being really disciplined with it.
So Ollie Gibb, the coach for St Cuthbert's. There he is. Alongside of him, Ben Gardner. So two very experienced campaigners. I think the messages in both camps are going to be pretty similar here, Mark. You know what I mean? They're, they're, doing, they're doing the same things on both ends. So it'll be interesting to see. I think it's going to be really, really key. Those coaches are going to be key in how they adapt in the second half. Only four goals as well. Not a lot of chances to substitute. So fitness is really going to come a big part of it. And the bench will be getting the chances now as well. So there it is, plenty of support for Diocesan, and they will change ends. So it'll be Diocesan playing from left to right. Some Cuthbert's from right to left. The swim off. Seven on six, I think it is. So seven is Georgia Daly. Six is Holly Dunn. And here we go. He's going to get that early advantage. And it will be Diocesan. No, some Cuthbert's, in fact. Cuthbert's in the blue caps, Diocesan in the white. And Emerson Styrus has already scored a very good goal. Working nicely alongside of Bianca Peddington, looking for that entry pass. They do come, the shot comes, great effort from Katie Marshall, showing plenty of enterprise, almost turning nothing into something. Working hard on that post up to create an opportunity, Katie. Well, it is a, there's a lot of that art of illusion, isn't it? It's about doing the unexpected. Turnover so, foul at the centre forward. So, a little bit of discipline at the moment from Diocesan. There's a time and a place. And so St Cuthbert's chance here early on to go up to a 3-2 lead. They scored very early at the start of this game. Diocesan just haven't really, really settled. Now, switching play. Oh, good pass. One touch. And exclusion comes. So six on five now for St Cuthbert's. Entry pass. Oh, that was the opportunity, wasn't it? Just didn't quite get the line right. Did everything right. Coach's dream. Just couldn't quite execute it. Good awareness from the from the wing player there to find the post. And timeout called, is it? I think we have an issue with the clocks. Having had the timeout, her to go. Referee turning to the table. So just a chance here for the players to get a little bit of recovery. Don't underestimate just how high their heart rates are and the level of duress they are under. And then you'll get the odd, as this game goes on, the odd bonfires in the legs and... One minute you're swimming flat out freestyle to one end and then a combination of backstroke free back to the other end and having to at the same time concentrate, think, make decisions under pressure. Really good match up here between the two number threes. Billy Freckler netting for Diocesan there in the white cap. In the blue cap, it's Bella Knight. Just resetting the clock. One of the cool things about water polo, the team that played the game before stays behind afterwards and uh, does the duty official. Okay, and there she is, number one. So looking to just maybe be a little bit more lateral, switch play, play a little bit more from the perimeter. And look, a little pump fake, looks for the entry pass picked off, easily read by St Cuthbert's, and they do come away with it. So they answer the challenge, answer the questions asked of them by Diocesan, still tied up at two goals each, four and a half minutes remaining in this third quarter.
good defence. That is Georgia Daly. We talked about her involvement in this game. Very much the leader, the X-Factor player. Has the ability to change the direction of a game, and that was a great example of it defensively. Has the ability at the other end of the pool to do the same thing offensively. Absolutely. I'm interested to see here. Both teams seem to be putting the ball to the centre forward a lot. We haven't seen a lot of shots on the outside. So we're interested to see if that changes. Well, we might not have a choice because no. it's been ineffective. So Diocesan now have got the momentum. Six on five. Exclusion comes. It was Katie Marshall who is excluded. Now, can they score from here? Pump fake comes. No, now. Took, needs to have the shot and goes wide. Maybe just took a little bit too much time, just a little bit of hesitation. No one really wanted to empower themselves. And so now St. Cuthbert's, they will have their chance through Kayla Gaskell. Maybe just to lay it off to Bella Knight. Not easily, read. what do the referees say? Exclusion, so six on five now. St. Cuthbert's with the advantage. Titanic tussle between two absolute powerhouses of New Zealand Secondary School's water polo. Switch. Another shot. Couldn't quite hang on to it. St. Cuthbert, Diocesan survive. Genevieve. 6 fives at both ends. No goal on both. So the 6 5 battle. We've got another one. Dio's turn. So another exclusion, Diocesan. And they call the timeout. So timeout called at a key time. So when we do resume play, it'll be Diocesan who will have the overlap. Six on five. So Cuthbert's who called the timeout? Dio. Dio called the timeout. So they clearly want to try and capitalise on this one-man advantage. And the girls here will know exactly what Gabby... Oluapu for Dio wants out of them. It's going to be an opportunity for Gabby to get the players in the key position. So the people she wants on the post in front of the goal right there, the left-hander in the right spot, all those kind of things. They'll know exactly what they need to do here. Do they shoot from out wide? Clock shot pressure again begins to build on Dio. Same situation as previously. Shot does need to come. Well blocked. Another very good save coming from Izzy Fenton in goal for St Cuthbert's. And now long chance here. St Cuthbert's at the other end. One on one chance. Drag back. Good defence. Desperate defence. Desperation stuff from Diocesan. That's an example of the new advantage rule, so it's a bit of a change. So in the, in the past, you would have seen Cooper Stewart on the far side, the referee, put his hand up early to signal that he was going to call a penalty if they didn't score a goal. OK, so there we go. So always under advantage, which is good. So they did play it. So chance now for St Cuthbert's to make it there. Does, and too easy. And the finish from the quality of Emerson Styrus. Too good. You've got a feel for Geneville. I don't really think Dyer had too much choice here. As we just go back here... Styrus gets nice and high, gets that egg, Peter gets the hips high out of the water, absolutely drills that into the right corner. And so, St Cuthbert's lead, 3-2, 1 minute 52 remaining in this third quarter. And again, Dio turn possession away, similar situation. History repeats as Kayla Gaskell comes forward, looks to try and lay it off, finds Bella Knight. They work Knight over. Good defence coming from Casey McDowell. Good recovery from Casey out of that out of that counter attack transition. So Diocesan now pressing high up on the player. Happy for the whistle to go. Exclusion against Georgia Daly for blocking with two hands there. Okay, so six on five opportunity. Now they shoot from distance. Looks a pump fake and. Does it go in? It does. Pushed in. What do the referees say? It is. So, 4-2. St. Cuthbert's now. Dio in trouble. 
in real trouble. Look at this, the pump fight, the power. And just shoves it in, chips it in. Number eight, Bianca Pennington, for St. Cuthbert's. It's a great hustle by Bianca to stay right there, stay with the play off that rebound and be the first one there. So just a minute to go. Dio need to score next. History throughout the season has proven these two schools are too close. For a two-goal buffer. They won't want to let it become three, but momentum very much with St. Cuthbert's. They've just been very, very good on turning position over and the counter-attack. Down this left-hand side, they've been very effective. As we see Bella Knight for St. Cuthbert's. Happy to go back in to Kayla Gaskell. Styrus acting almost in that pivot. Now, that is the turnover they've been hoping for. Just 29 seconds remain. We'll get one more crack at it, Dio. Now, they need to go. They need to go quickly. The shot's got to come. Surely entry pass comes. Brilliant. Great water polo. Lucy. Jalice, the goal scorer, and it came at the right time with just 19 seconds remaining in this third quarter. The coaches will be delighted and thrilled with that. Kayla Gaskell for St. Cuthbert's tried to do everything she could defensively, just got on the wrong side. And now it is well and truly game on. Another goal coming out of that counter-attack. Exclusion, 6-5 situation. And now this is where just... Gosterson need to just maintain their concentration, need to be desperate. Good defence, they do turn it over, they'll get another crack at it. How long have we got on the clock? That's it, third quarter up. And it is still St Cuthbert's four, Diocesan three. Settle back, folks. Enjoy all of this one, because 18 minutes of hope, six minutes of truth, and we're about to approach that threshold. Yeah, really interesting. You mentioned it earlier, Mark, that it's been quite interesting that the defence... An attack starts with good defence, and that's where all of these three goals in that quarter have come from. It's been a, a really good press, a turnover, a loose pass, into counter-attack, and then scoring either a penalty or a 6-5 situation. So I think whoever can look after the ball the best on their offence and not give away these counter-attack chances, you know, through a loose pass or a, or a lost ball, are, is going to come out on top today. Yes, and Cuthbert's will be hoping they can just come out here in this final, be the first team to score, have that two-goal buffer, and just force... Diocese and to possibly panic a little bit. Very easy at a senior level to be able to slow time down, understand what six or eight minute quarters feel like. For secondary school kids, well, not as easy. You might have the physical maturity, but sometimes just haven't had enough time in the game to maybe slow down time in the face of adversity. So here we go, settle back. And never lost, lost on us either in this sort of in the national final. It's the fact that for a lot of these schools, it's their last ever game of water polo representing their school, and it's going to yep. come down to it. Two very, very well established schools, and often two private schools who set the highest standards both academically and across the arts, and clearly in sport as well. Big reputations. But you need to have the rivalries. You don't have Pete Sampras without Andre Agassi or Serena Williams with. Now to Sister Venus. And so, again, the swim off has always gone the way of St. Cuthbert's. Happy to move the ball quickly here. So, Emerson Styrus goes across to Pennington. They get nice and high up on Katie Marshall. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Shot clock pressure starts to come and they turn it over through the middle so Diocese can get away to the start they were hoping for. They survived that first initial onslaught in this final quarter. Six five opportunity for Dio. So a chance here to even it up, to wrap it up or to bring it level. Your first goal in this quarter is really, really crucial. Yeah. But Dyer, they've just been a little bit guilty, haven't they? They've just been a little bit hesitant. 
They've been in these situations before and then they find themselves under pressure. No one seems to want to take it. The shot clock pressure continues to build. Got to have the shot now. And they do score. Find that little channel down the left-hand side. Worked it nicely. The door was ajar. And this time, under huge pressure, Diocesan hit back and suddenly we're tied up. Look at the work being done here, off the ball, and that is brilliant from Ali Millard for Diocesan. Great patience, Casey McDowell waiting, 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 gives that pass, and Ali, bang, down the line, great finish. Yeah, and Izzy Fenton just a little bit outsided, so, for all, as we have just under five minutes remaining. The game everybody thought, I went round and I was talking to some of the students out of Rosmini and Nathan and Matt and they were saying well one went for one school one went for the other such has been the closeness and timeout called so that's in Guthrie's first timeout both teams get two timeouts during the match uh, both teams have now had one so St Cuthbert's Ollie Gibb what's Ollie seeing What's he wanting here now? I think he's going to be looking just to set up, as we discussed earlier, getting his players in the right position. They'll be looking to slide someone, get people in good shooting positions, to get the right matchups and, and find a shooting lane to finish. Hope you are enjoying the coverage, folks, wherever you are around the country. The alumni of both schools, family and friends. Two great schools, two teams full of gladiators. And it's very much the street fight we thought. Cap 7, of course, the official ball supplier for water polo for New Zealand water polo. So, this is a good patient build up here. It's a very different build up from St. Cuths. And now, they pull the trigger. Oh, look at that. Look at that from Bianca Pennington. She does the little pump fake. She looks very much like she's about to launch it towards the right hand upright and then just creates. A little look at this, and then just slices that ball to the left. Superb, almost around the corner, gets around Casey McDowell. It's a great technical finish from Bianca on her legs, working working the blockers as they start to drop. She curls it around them. Brilliant finish. And so just like that, some cuthbits now go out five four. Dio, this is where they've been good. Shot clock pressure though. It's been one area where. Look at this, so not pressing high at all, St Cuthbert sitting back, more on a man on man's eat. they look to try and turn it, the backhand comes, can they turn it? Ellie Millard, the intended receiver, turn over St Cuthbert's, so St Cuthbert's with the momentum swing, 3 minutes 58 remain. Still plenty of time for both teams. Genevieve and goal, she is very composed, doesn't seem to get rattled. Most valuable player of the North Island Secondary Schools Championship. Yeah. Just seems to have that time, doesn't she? She doesn't panic, she never looks flustered. She's doing a good job leading her defence and being vocal in there as well. Yeah. Again, just want to acknowledge again our sponsors, Baileys, Caltex, and Apollo Projects, as we now see the shot come. These two Titans, five all. It's great work by Ali Three minutes Mara. remain. She stayed on her legs. You've got Katie Marshall all over her, but she does a good job to fight up, stay up, roll out, and put that ball in the cage. So now, Emerson Styrus, like to see Emerson get still involved more. So maybe look to try and move forward a little bit. And now the big shot comes, oh, and you can just see the disappointment from Jenna Veal. She knew that. Great work from Erica Patterson. Just off balance, wasn't she, Veal, a little bit here? Look at that. Uh, almost got across, too. But Erica Patterson, is that the moment? Is that the goal that will secure them a national title? Well, there is still two minutes 50 to go. And the way this game has gone in the third and fourth quarters as fatigue sets in, you sense there is still another chapter to be written. Who will write it? It's 
Oh, another one from nowhere. And so Izzy Fenton will get to a point in this game where the shot clock will come into it. Now, chance here, chance here. The little lob shot just like that. It's in comforts now. Go up by two. Is that the defining moment? Now what the diocesan have? Can they come back from this? What are the lessons they've learned from 12 months ago? Because they've gained, it's been very much the St Cuthbert's way, isn't it? It's the turnover, it's the counter-attack that's been the difference. They've been really good with that counter, and it's great patience there by Emerson Styrus to give that cross pass, easy finish. Now diocesan. And exclusion, so six on five now for Dio. So, they look 13 seconds on the shot clock. The blockers are there, trying to shut down the lanes. Not in a press situation. Now, oh, looks to try and sneak it, gets the ball back. And so, Diocesan will come away with another possession. So, 15 seconds. Oh, looking to lob, big shot here, big goal, big goal in the context of it. We're back to one. Wow! Great. Edge of your seat stuff. It's not over yet, folks. One of the great finals beginning to play out. Great discipline, great patience from Dio there, and they don't go away. They're going stick to stick with it. All their games this year have been like this. So 142 remains. Probably two possessions. Both schools remain. Dyson's are now disciplined. What are the, how do they set themselves up here? Dropping back, more of his own type defence, trying to chuck, shut the lanes down. Puts St Cuthbert's under pressure with the shot clock. Now they come forward. Casey McDowell deciding to get into the face. The shot comes, brilliant save from Geneville. And now, Diocesan. Time is running down, a minute 12 remains. The more than 100 students here hold their breath, the more than 2,000 at home hold theirs. Shot clock 12, entry pass comes, turned over by St Cuthbert's. Through Bianca Pennington, 55 seconds, Dio will still have another shot. They need to try and turn it over, can't manage to do it. Vita Yarrell Stevenson doing everything she could to try and turn it over. Are we going to go to penalties? Nine seconds on the shot clock. That'll leave 28 seconds left for Dio to get the job done if, in fact, St Cuthbert's don't score from here. And now, Gabby Oliapo waits. They've turned it over, though. St Cuthbert's come away with it. All they have to do here is run it down. St Cuthbert's 20 seconds away from winning it. 15 left on the shot clock. They've got no choice. It's St Cuthbert's, they lead by a goal, three, six seconds, St Cuthbert's are about to be crowned national champions, St Cuthbert's will win it, and St Cuthbert's are your New Zealand secondary schools champions, they win it by seven six in one of the great finals, Diocesan for the second year in a row will be runners up. It was a final for the ages. It had everything. Theatre, drama, physicality, incredible athleticism. Look at the emotion. Look what it means to them. Izzy Fenton, Kayla Gaskell, Bella Knight, Zoe Knight, Beatrice Cook, Holly Dunn, Emerson Styrus, Bianca Pennington, Eric Patterson, Katie Marshall, Rose Alexic, Mia Kelleher, and Isabella Lambie. Hamish McDonald summed that up. What an incredible final, Mark, and a testament to both these teams and both these programs. You know, they've gone at it all year, but, you know, St. Cuth, in the end, that counter-attack, they're stealing on defence, such control, such discipline, and they've done a really, really good job to get that final. Yeah, commiserations must go the way of Diocese, and they set the standard. They are the reason why so many girls' schools put such much resource into it. They know how hard it is to beat Diocese. And Diocesan, because they've become so good, they've got the target on their back, haven't they? It's almost a little unfair. Everybody's targeting Dio. Yeah, absolutely.
And, and, you, and you've got to put credit to St. Cuffs, the way they play today. They stay composed. As Dio made those little runs at them, it would have been very easy to start to worry and start to try and protect that lead rather than keep playing. But they did exactly that. And really good job. Well, there it is. Hugs. Plenty of emotion from family and friends. Congratulations to St. Cuthbert's beating Diocesan by just a single goal. Well, folks, don't go away because up next, it's one of the biggest prizes in secondary school boys sport. It is the final of the secondary school water polo between the might of Sacred Heart and Tauranga Boys College. That is up next. This isn't about cameras. It's about getting a better shot. So you can get a better result. A great photo of your property is more important than a picture of our agent. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah. Feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex.
Right, ladies and gentlemen, this downtown apartment is the perfect first property. Okay. Our vendors have a new baby, then moving on, so we're selling this today. Do I have any more bids? One bid here. Thank you. I've got a bid there. We've got one more here. Yes, we have one more bid. We have a bid here. Do we have any more final This bid? isn't about just selling one, one property. It's about one getting one a better contract. result for our clients. We so, so we can help them with their next property, the one after that, and the one after that. Whoops, running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. No mate, hurry mate, picky mate, kaki mate. Welcome to Jelly Park in Christchurch for the New Zealand Secondary Schools Water Polo Championships. And it comes down to this, one of the greatest prizes in New Zealand, in New Zealand Secondary School boys sport. The gold medal, the crown of being the best water polo team in the country. It's been three days of great schools battling each other and it now it comes down to two. The might of Sacred Heart Co College out of Auckland, the North Island champions, up against Tauranga Boys, the runners-up in the North Island championships. Both teams deserve to be here, but both teams haven't had it easy. Sacred Heart, well, it's a team that are just so incredibly fit. They move the ball quickly. Oliver Jarvi, big responsibility in goal. And then you run through the likes of Ben Miller, Toby Grace, Will Quinn. It is a side that, well, is just blessed with talent. However, the challenge will come from Tauranga Boys College, Lachlan Keeney in goal. Then you've got the likes of Joseph Goodwin, Cody Henry, Isaac Shula, Gene Baggett. It is a full squad of 13. Individuals will win your game, squads will win you a championship. Joining me in commentary is Lockie Griffith. Lockie, you've watched both teams, contrasting styles, talking to everybody. Everyone's saying this is basically Sacred Heart's final to lose. Yeah, I would agree there, Mark. Yeah, I would agree there, Mark. Um, Sacred Heart are definitely the strongest, strongest uh, line-up in the squad. Um, they're very fast, um, but Tauranga are definitely the stronger physicality team here. Okay, so we saw last year in the women's final, in the girls' final last year, where a Dossison team went his favourite against Rangatoto. Rangatoto got up early and put just a little bit of doubt into Dossison and Diocesan maybe didn't know how to react. Is that the case here? How important is it that Tauranga score early, put some pressure on? It's extremely important, Mark. If Tauranga can get up early and they can hold that lead, I think they could, could be in trouble. Yeah, this is just going to be an absolutely wonderful battle. It's a game that's fast. It's a game that requires incredible fitness, high aerobic, but also very, very physical. And so discipline's going to be a big part. Yes, if uh, Tauranga can keep all of their players into the game and not excluded on three, we should be in for a really good battle. Yeah, so the exclusion situation when you get a five on four and teams like to score 70% of the times. And they are both sides who... Tauranga is a school that have just been building over recent times, not just at a school level, but also at a, at a regional level within the Bay of Plenty, at a club level as well. And, and, and it's great to have the water polo game spreading beyond the Bombay Hills. Yes, we've had um, this year is the second year in a row where three out of the top four teams are out of Auckland. And Tauranga have really started that at their senior men's, doing really well, some success, and that's feeding into the, the school groups. Yeah, they are used to being in the top four. 
along with Hamilton boys, but really prior to a few years ago, it was always dominated by the Auckland schools. Well, part of the protocol that goes with water polo is the introduction of the two teams. Okay, so we are set to go. John Waldo, Olympic Games official for water polo. Corbin Hall alongside of him. So two of the very best in the country. Well, they talk about prizes in secondary school sport. There's the Marty Cup in rowing. There's clearly the 1A first 15 comp. New Zealand football trophy. But this is one that a lot of the schools want to win. This is the sport that sort of sometimes just maybe doesn't get the recognition. But... It is a sport that requires the highest level of athleticism. It requires a skill set beyond a lot of those sports I've just mentioned. Incredibly prestigious. Sacred Heart, well, they've won it multiple times. Tauranga looking to try and win their first. They've got to get off to a good start. Lockie Griffiths, they've got to try and get up early. If Tauranga can really get started early, then it's got to be a great game. If Sacred get the first goal, I think Tauranga... Got to work really, really hard to get the second one back. So we just have had it further that number nine, in fact, is Toby Grace, and number six is Seth Byers. So the team lists differ. So four periods of six minutes. Settle back, folks. This is going to be a stunner. 
Polo Project special acknowledgement to them, Bailey's Real Estate. If you're thinking about selling your home, do go with those brands that support your sport. Get in touch with a real estate agent from Bailey's. Of course, Caltech's on board as well. So if you're filling up your car, stop and support Caltech. They're investing back in your sport. So we are underway with the swim off. Who's going to get the first position? Always a fascinating little battle. And it will be Sacred Heart in the white who will come away with it. They are a team who are prepared to use the ball early and quickly. They've got depth. They won't panic. They've got a legacy in this sport. So number three is Fletcher Hilton. And looks for the entry pass. Can't quite find the intended receiver, which was number 12, Noah Grace. And so first now opportunity. In fact, it is a penalty being called. So there we go, penalty call. So early on, chance here for Tony Grace. Big save comes, though, from Lachlan Keeney. Well, how big is that early on in the context of this match? You talk about a player trying to change momentum, trying to get your team up. That is a great start. That is massive for Totem there. If they can capitalise on that in this offence, they could be in for a good game. Now, Tauranga happy to play on the perimeter. Shot clock 30 seconds. Chance here now for Gene Baggett, the number 10. Big shot does come, but blocked in the finish. And Oliver Jarvi gets play back underway for Sacred Heart. And now look to switch it. Chance here for Sacred Heart. No. And it is. Toby Grace. Grace goes back to Bronson Chuckson. Across to Hilton. Little entry pass comes. Oh, it was on to Tended receivers, Bronson Chuckson. That really good piece of defense coming from Jack Webster for Tauranga. Both teams just trying to figure out what they're doing. The other side's doing offensively and defensively, and that'll be the challenge for both coaches early on. And now, continuing down that side of the pool on that right side, here is Fletcher Hilton. And has a big cannon shot, and it just goes wide, and I just think that maybe Lachlan Keeney might have got his mitt to it. Certainly shown his quality, Fletcher Hilton. So good high press defense coming from Sacred Heart. No little entry pass. Exclusion comes. So six on five. Opportunity now for Tauranga to try and take the early lead. 16 seconds on the shot clock. Interesting Sacred Heart sitting back. Zone type defense. And big shot does come over the top though. But good pressure early on from Tauranga. That zone is working really, really well from Sacred Heart on defense. Especially after that exclusion. Oh, quick play here. This is where they're so good, Sacred Heart. It's the speed in which they play. And what is the rule lead? Hilton was the intended receiver. And so exclusion now, so chance for Sacred Heart. Six on five. They've got the overlap. Tauranga bringing in big Jack Webster. And they just turn that over with that. Will frustrate the coaching staff. But Hilton trying to come across. But immediately it is through Joseph Goodjohn that Tauranga come up this right hand side of the pool they need to go be able to go the distance go back across to Cody Henry Henry happy back to go to Baggett Baggett though they will come over and that game Fletcher Hilton brilliant he's got Rowan Eilert out to his right hand side does he go on his own surely he's got to go on his own he does no lays it off Superb. brilliant play brilliant play from Hilton finds Rowan Eilert and they just had that two on one situation turned it over and just the counter-attack, and you just can't afford to do that against the Midas Sacred Heart. This is where they're just so good, Mark. This is where Sacred Heart, to take control of games, and they're two-on-ones, and they just finish them every time. So, Tauranga. And look at Hilton. 
Fletcher Hilton there. He's everywhere. Yeah, we see a big cannon of a left-handed shot coming from Baggett. Some very good players have come out of Sacred Heart. The great Matt Lewis. He'll be one of the finest that's played the game in this country. And now, chance here, Sacred Heart to take it to two. Have no choice. Kerry O'Reilly getting excluded. So six on five now. Sacred Heart will want to capitalise here. Oh, good defence. But still come away with it. Shot clock. Oh, too easy. Too good. This time, Bronson chucks in. And it's Sacred Heart who lead by two early on. Worst case scenario for Tauranga. Just too easy. Just left unmarked. Lovely little entry pass. And that's the problem when you sit back. Yeah, Tauranga there just need a bit more discipline on defence not to leave early. Now Chance, can they score here? Great save, Oli Jarvi. So a big shout out to the alumni of both schools and a large contingent at Sacred Heart. Looks like Kelson Butler will be watching this. Both schools, Tauranga, great alumni as well. It's the speed, it's this understanding, the cohesion that Sacred Heart have. Oh, lovely little pass, or shot I should say. Just took all the pace off it. And often be the hardest for the goalkeepers. Not the right hand side. It is Gene Baggett. But just look at the defence here. Hilton just sitting back, coming across now to cover the centre forward, who is Henry Sh Scholes. Scholes. Oh, big cannon of a shot, but they're having to do it from distance at the moment. And too easily picked off and read by Oliver Jarvi. Oli Jarvi with another good save there. He's massive for this team. Sacred Heart's defence is definitely one of their strong points. And Josh Anderson. So happy to play the perimeter. Back to Hilton. Shot clock. Pressure beginning to build. And Tauranga will come away with it. So good pressure from Tauranga. Might want to concede a third though. Really need to be the next team to try and score. Lovely little move here from Gene Baggett. He's a quality player. And now has a big goal. Oh, look at that. Look at the power on that shot. The danger that he shows. But as we come to the end... Oh, in fact, it's... Not yet. As we come to the end of the first quarter, it is Sacred Heart who lead by two goals to nothing over Tauranga Boys College. Yeah, Sacred Heart have started a bit of the two teams here. Tauranga really, really needs to work hard on stopping Sacred from scoring back-to-back -back goals. This is where Sacred gain momentum in games and can really punish you. Yeah, so, OK, let's, let's imagine you are the coach of Tauranga, David Cooper. What, what's your message here? What are you wanting to see differently? If we can just, if they could just stop the uh, Sacred Heart counter-attack, then I think they're in with a shot. Six on six, these teams match up very, very well. The Sacred look to counter on the right-hand side through Fletcher. Everything is going through him at the moment, and then the big cross pass over to, to Bronson or Toby. Yeah, Seth Byers just a little bit unlucky there. And not Seth Byers, my apologies. And number six, Jack Webster there for Tauranga. Sacred Heart earlier had brought Corey Callow in to have a chat to them. Corey, of course, playing for the Crusaders now and part of a very successful era during the Sacred Heart water polo and a member of the New Zealand Secretary School's water polo team. So possession goes the way of Tauranga. Just want to hit them hard and hit them early now. They need to be the next team to score. 
Lovely little entry pass, good. Does get the shot, just goes over the top. Opportunity wasted, great enterprise though, being shown by Tauranga. Now it's the counter-attack we talk about. The speed in which they play it. Getting across and shutting Hilton down. It was Cody Henry. They shut him down, then you've got to worry about Bronson Chugson. He's on the ball at the moment. Great entry pass there from Bronson. Plenty of time on the shot clock. So the pump fake being shown by Hilton. And now another big channel of a shot. Too good, too easy. And Sacred Heart seems to run away with it. Rowan Elliott, the goal scorer this time. But just great composure again, led by Fletcher Hilton. Comes across nicely there to Toby Grace. And then Rowan Elliott just pulling the trigger and Tauranga maybe have just got to press a little bit higher, get more up in a man-on-man -man type defence. Definitely, they need to push. Sacred are just so patient in their attack. Just picked off again. Referee say no. So just a minor foul. No exclusion here. Put the ball away of Tauranga. Now I'll go across, wayward pass. If I can just pull one back here, give him some confidence. And there it is. There it is. And it does come from the edge of the perimeter. And the goal scorer, Josh Anderson, uh, my apologies, is Cody Henry. Let's have a look here, really nicely done. Patient build up that time. Force the sacred defense out and they've opened up that shooting lane for Cody. Yeah, Fletcher Hilton, he's good. They run a lot of play through Hilton, got great vision. Well, this time, a big block goes up and was Henry Scholes. And so now Kerry O'Reilly will have to bring another one back and just have it to one. But just see again Sacred pressing high on defence. And then he'll drop back into more of that zone type defence now. Angle comes but the door was never open. A little ambitious. But also good to see Bronson Chasen back there in defence. And now it is Hilton. Intended receiver. And Seth Byers. And we'll have another penalty. So. And too good. This time Toby Grace. Leaves nothing to chance. Absolutely drills it into the left-hand side. And, well, Lachlan Keeney, not even the best reflexes in the world would stop that. Went the right way, but just too much power. How do you stop the momentum? You just need to score next, Mark. You just need to score next and stop that counter-attack through Fletcher. so organised at the back as well. Steal again. And they go turn it over and this is where they're dangerous. And again it's that man Hilton. Got a sister who's a very, very good runner. Bronson. Judson. Finds Noah Grace. This time they do get back and turn it over. So better defence from Tauranga. This time they do get up in that man-on-man -man press. Right. So can bring it back within two. They're capable Tauranga. Shot clock, two seconds left on the clock, has a shot at it and does manage to just squeeze it through the right-hand side. You talk about 
big moments. How big was that in the context of this? Now it's back to two. Didn't have a lot to work with. Shot clock under all sorts of pressure and just steps up. Henry Scholes, and just like that, 4 2. Massive from Totonga there. Now they're back in the game. Just need to stop Sacred's counter attack. Good defense. Go down, get the ball in the hands of the likes of Isaac Schuller and Gene Bagger and keep going. Now they've got to stop them at the other end, though. Don't want to score and then concede. You just feel, though, that they've got it on a dime at the moment, Sacred Heart. That pass, though. Intended for Hilton, couldn't quite get it. Nice bit of play, interplay there between the goalkeeper and great Gene Baggett. And come up, have 18 seconds on that shot clock. So, again, they're going to need to come forward, pressing high at Sacred Heart now. Can they therefore get that entry pass in seven on the shot clock? Four seconds. Looking for the exclusion. Can't get it. Shot now comes. But wide. Falling match. 4-2. Exclusion does come, so it'll be another 20 seconds on that shot clock, is it? 30 seconds, in fact. So chance here for Tauranga. Now, this is where they can be good. Oh, just wide. And you could just hear the sigh from the Tauranga supporters. Now Bonson shakes in. Is it? Well, it's Hilton again, number three. Chokes in now and think. Good entry pass, a little backhand flick. Worked over. Five on. Six on five. Oh, it does score. Too easy. That is the danger. You talked about it when it's six on six. They're in the contest at the moment, it's six on five. Well, Sacred Art just capitalised, don't they? They're just so patient. Justin Pickering's got them running a great system, and they're just so patient and so disciplined on that moment. Knowledge Caltex, too, for their support. So 5 2. Just over a minute remaining. For the half time. I still think if Tauranga can just keep it within two. So I go into half time feeling that they're still in this game. And yeah, big shot comes, but comfortably picked off in the finish by Oliver Javi. He's too good, you've got to be more creative than that. And now Jed Evans. So first time we've seen Evans in the game. He looks for that entry pass, but really nicely read in the finish by Henry Scholes. Fifteen seconds on the shot clock. Can toad on the conjure up here. Ten right, they seconds. Did, they need a goal here. Totally. Yep. Exclusion. Here we go. Great chance to tie on up. Yeah, we've got times running out though in the actual half. There's only three seconds remaining on the clock. They need to shoot. No, oh, they can't get it. Good defense coming across there was Toby Grace. And so they'll go into half time. Sacred Heart College leading Todonga by five goals to two. So if you're the coach of Todonga Boys College, David Cooper, what's the message at half time? You've got to just stop again, stop the sacred counter attack. That's what's uh, that's what's really hurting them. And you just need to be a bit more patient on attack. You've still got time. You've still got a whole half to, to get those goals back one at a time. Get the ball into the likes of Cody, Kerry, Gene Baggett's hands. Yeah, I was going to ask you that offensively. I mean, they've had possession, haven't they? But they, yeah, they, they just, it's just such a good sacred heart defence to try and break down. They set up at zone and then sometimes they're pressing. Yeah, Sacred Heart have a really, really good defensive system. Tauranga just need to move the ball and actually just create those drives to create the space and get those exclusions. They look all right when they get the exclusions. They just need to finish the chances. Yep. So just 12 minutes separate Sacred Heart from winning another National Water Polo title. Hope you are enjoying coverage here on Fakata Māori. Special thanks to Bailey's Real Estate.
Celtics for their support. Apollo. New Zealand Carbon Farming, Pure Athletic, of course. two referees today that is Corbin Hall across the far side and John Waldo as well so to swim off number 10 for Tauranga is Gene Baggett 11 for Sacred Heart is Rowan Elliott Cooper has put into place here. The manager is Kevin Shuler, former All Black. Right, Kevin Shuler. A big effort. But big block there from Sacred Heart. Yeah, big block. I think it came from Josh Anderson. He got up nice and high. Can't underestimate just how much energy that takes too to get that high out of the water. Yeah, these boys have been working hard with Justin and their defense again has just been the difference. Yeah, just look at the ball control there from Bonson Chaseon too. Just just seems to have so much time and they've just got no choice to but press high on them. This is better defense from Todon. It's not giving them the there room. Much better from Todon there. Double block. Now can they capitalize? So Lockie Griffiths is alongside of me bringing you all the expert comments. himself does he go from thing does he the old pump fake the big shot does come just wide so we've seen both teams have a possession in this third quarter what have you noticed Tauranga are playing uh, a lot more balanced and disciplined Sacred is still just sticking with the game plan play fast play strong and patient Tauranga can get the ball up the top with Gene Baggett and Isaac Shuler they can create some opportunities here's Gene now still just a 5-2 a couple of goals can change the whole context of this match. So Sacred Heart, of, as we see Hilton there. Pretty much a key playmaker for Sacred Heart. There's Fletcher Hilton. No, another good entry pass this time the intended receiver was Bronson Chakeson. So another exclusion, five, six on five chance here. Yeah, just oh, great save. That goes out though, goes in. I was gonna say outstanding from Lachlan Keeney, but just so much power on it. I thought initially he'd done enough and then it just snuck its way back in. Have a look here. Just look at the velocity on this from Noah Grace absolute cannon don't underestimate the brilliant reflexes there of Lachlan Keeney but it is another goal for Sacred Heart they lead 6-2 you're looking at one of the great secondary school sides if they continue to extend the lead people have talked about this total uh, this Sacred Heart side as being just at another level question for Todong is do they believe and a little bit of a cheeky shot but just too much traffic and now Sacred Heart at the other end through Hilton happy happy oh beautiful but the intent was right just picked up in his peripheral vision the wrong player Gene Baggett now, Tonga really, really need to be the next team to score. Great chance now with an ejection. Can they capitalise? 
they've got no choice. They just have to, don't they? It's getting to that point where... They need to be a little bit more patient with their attack, especially on those six-on-fives. Yeah. Try and work the Sacred Heart defense a little bit more. It's amazing, though, isn't it, that this age group and at this level, when you are under a little bit of pressure, time just seems to speed up a bit. You don't feel like you've got the time. You feel a little bit more rushed. Just okay, we go back to Fletcher Hilton. and chugs and here it is another one too good too simple too easy Noah Grace you saw him with a cannon shot earlier and now he just shows his ability his diversity great but, ball in by Bronson oh, you've got to feel for Lachlan Kenny he's doing a lot right but it's just not really going his way and momentum very much with Sacred Heart so now what Tauranga have got to do here they've just got to continue to stick to their systems They've got to be patient. And I think that's been the key word. And work a little bit harder on the counter. <laughs> Sacred Heart. They'll be happy just to slow things down. Two minutes remaining in this third quarter. No, a oh, brilliant piece of... Um, ball handling skills there couldn't quite hold on to it but just showing the athleticism and the fitness of the Sacred Heart team under Justin Pickering great good player in his own right Pickering him and Dave Cooper are actually two teammates at Tottenham as well they know each other very very well looking, looking but just watch off the ball here have a look at the way Sacred Heart are setting themselves up. The little lob shot, hopeful, wishful, can turn, can't flip. So there goes Bronson Chugson. This time throws the ball away. There was an intended target. Gets a little wave and apology from his teammate. For not being where Bronson hoped them to be. But it's been paid frenetic pace so just over a minute remains in this third quarter so now Joseph Goodjohn on the number two cap for Tauranga goes back to Gene Baggett oh, another block by Sacred Heart Better, more patient from Tauranga, but still not going anywhere because Tauranga just have this brilliant ability, don't they, to adapt? They can play that zone defense next minute they're pressing. Yeah, Sacred Heart, they're just, they're just really switched on under Justin. He's created some really good water polo athletes of high IQ. You yeah. can have the ability to just change the game. Yeah, and you've got it. You can't have one person doing it. You're just collectively going, hey, this is the situation. We'll press high. Okay, we'll sit back more zone defense. And it's just this automatic cohesion between them two, led very well by Hilton, Fletcher Hilton. And I think here he is. I think he's just been superb. Another big shot, oh, another goal. Man. And I tell you what, the bench stands for Sacred Heart. They want this, they want it badly. And now 7 2, starting to just get away from Tauranga. Seven seconds remaining in this quarter. And at what point do you perhaps say, you know what, second is good enough today? Try to be there following his brother, brother Noah's lead and scoring an absolute cannon. So got Noah Grace and Toby Grace. Oh, big, big shot. But another big block. And Oliver Javi. And that will bring the third quarter to an end. And it's all Sacred Heart leading by six, eight, two. New Zealand Secondary Schools final, live from Jelly Park in Christchurch, courtesy of Fakasta Māori. Hope you are enjoying coverage. Special thanks to Bailey's, Polo Projects, Caltex, New Zealand Carbon Farming, Pure Athletic. If any of those brands at some point are part of a purchasing decision, please go with the brands that support this sport that are bringing you this live coverage. We've got Lockie Griffiths alongside of us. Really... I mean, for Tauranga, what now? They need to just take some risks, Mark. They need to just 
full middle, try and get that counter-attack going. If they need to start leaving defence early, they've just got to have to. They yep. need the goals, they need them early. Use your bench if fatigue levels kick in and just go hard. Yep. Yep. Nothing to lose now. No, absolutely nothing Structure to lose. Structure needs to probably go out the door a bit more. It was really important, I think, that Tauranga scored a couple of quick goals. That didn't quite happen, did it, and finished. And This is the swim off. Just six minutes remain. Six minutes for Sacred Heart to win another one. Great save, Oli Jarvi. Anderson. And that will also be an opportunity too, won't it? If clock ticks down to give every player their opportunity in this final if they haven't used their entire bench. Allow that those year 11 and 12 yeah, students yeah. to experience what it feels like at a national schoolboy level because they're going to carry the torch, aren't they, going forward for the next two years. Some of these young men on both sides, this will be their last game, last game of water polo for their school, so it'll be pretty emotional. That's right, Mark. It's definitely one you remember. School water polo is like nothing else. Yeah. Well, it's where you develop. Look, it's a lot of school sport. It's actually where you start understanding sort of professionalism, understand training properly, and you start to understand strategy a bit more and your role. As we see Sacred Heart now just lining up another one. And Bonson takes in again. This time just couldn't quite control it. I've got to say that Gene Baggett's been everywhere today for Todon. Very, very good player. Great defense again from there, Gene. And now he, they really just need to push. Take some risks, Tauranga. Yeah, just... Now this is it. Now have the shot first up. Really good. That's much better. Much better play from Tauranga there. Did everything right. But you've got to give Oliver Jarvie credit because he came across, came off his line a little bit, shut the angle down. And now we do see Fletcher Hilton again. see the communication going on as they're looking across the pool they're talking to each other time out there from sacred great patience there worked the ball got the ejection so 8-2 on the cusp of another national title big sport at sacred heart they do have a water polo facility which is a big advantage the schools that do do well tend to seem to be well resourced Good challenge for a lot of schools in terms of pool space, but Tauranga, it's great for just sport generally. The sport generally that you've got a strong club system now, good schools starting to come through in Tauranga. It can't just be an Auckland based school. You've got Hamilton, we saw that playing Palmerston North Boys for third and fourth. Uh, we know how close it is between the likes of the Rosmanis, the West Lakes, the Auckland Grammar have got a new facility. You know, we've seen St. Beads do well, South Island champions, so you know, it's, it's, got, to, it's got to be good for. The overall good of the sport. It's keeping them involved in the sport once their school is over. So Sacred Heart get play back underway again. A little pump fake. And another big shot, too easy. This time, Toby Grace. That man again. But it was again that man, Fletcher Hilton, who just held everybody up just not getting up needed to just go a little bit more man on man shut the time down shut the space down easier said than done but you've got to remember their heart rates are probably about 170 beats they're breathing through their eyelids bonfires in the legs and expecting them to think clearly another big shot cannon of a shot and they do score this time so 9-3 
a little too, little too late perhaps. perhaps. 47 remains. Need to keep pushing, get the ball on the likes of Isaac Shiver's hands. That was great elevation. Totem are now starting to adapt. Yeah, underrated loose forward. Kevin Shawler back in his day. Great rugby player. Came through a really golden era of loose forwards in New Zealand, so probably didn't play as many all black matches as perhaps should have. And so Oliver Jarvie just be happy to slow things down now. They'll be happy to play their 30 seconds, play their shot clock, three minutes to go. But I'd still would just like to see Tauranga just come forward, press a little higher, but a niggle going on there between number seven, Kerry O'Reilly, and number 12, Noah Grace. Oh, look at that lovely little pump fake then, just turns it into the entry pass, looks for the back end, doesn't quite come off, but the Enterprise and do it this time, and they can, can they? Oh, great save. Well done, Lachlan Keeney. Really good. Oh, cannon of a shot. Good save at the other end, too. Oh, with great velocity on that. So both goalkeepers being brilliant. Oh, the Javi. Oli Jarvis really, really kept Tauranga out of the game. His saves have kept sacred with that comfortable buffer, and it just allows him to be have a little bit more time on the ball, make better decisions, and not rush anything. So Noah Grace here for sacred. I just love the finesse in which they've got that confidence to be able to change it up, and they just open it up at the other side, and just too easy. I said too easy too many times today because they make it look easy, don't they? Look at this, just how patient and composed. They just seem to have that much more time. So look at Toby Grace. Just, just gets it across here. You almost think the backhand shot's coming. And the defender there, which I think was Jack Webster, was caught in two minds in the next split second of hesitation. Sacred Heart extend their lead. 10-3. Minute 53 remain. Sacred Heart go from one end to the other and draw the exclusion so Sacred Heart now 6-5 overlap and just gets a little bit away from Bronson Chugson but he fights to get the ball back and will come away with it Quality, isn't it? This time from the edge of the perimeter. Toby Grace involved, the distributor. Sebastian done there. That is just an outstanding six on five move. The patience from Toby Grace. Waited for the movement. On the hand, shot across the goalie. Yeah, two, two defenders on him too, but it's just the it's the weight of the pass here which just impresses me. Look at that. Outstanding timing movement from Sebastian Dunn as well. Really, really nice. So just 53 seconds remaining. And one of the most dominant displays we've seen. Save from Molly Jarvi there. In New Zealand secondary schools, water polo, led by that man. I mean, almost the first player that you pick in any of these games, whether it be ice hockey, sports like futsal, get your goalkeeper right, get your goalkeeper right. And don't underestimate the technical side of it. Got to be fearless, because this ball, when it comes at the velocity that it comes at, can sting. That ability to get high, be able to read it, shut space down. Penalty will come. So a chance here to just close it up to 11-4. Uh, really nice use of the ball there from Isaac Schuller. Decides to skim it in. But 
but Sacred Heart, no, they've got this now. 52 seconds remain. Chance here to just shut it down. Run the shot clock down. Set up for one more opportunity defensively. Another little beautiful entry pass, and that's where the difference has been, the accuracy and the weight that they put on those passes. Tauranga, this is better from them. Another big cannon of a shot, but blocked easily by Noah Grace. Grace has been good, been everywhere too. Both ends of the pool. They'll just run the shot clock yeah. out here. Sacred. 12 seconds down, and they deserve their moment. Sacred Heart, once again, about to be crowned New Zealand Secondary School Champions. And there it is, Sacred Heart win it. Sacred Heart of Auckland win the New Zealand Secondary School Boys Water Polo Championship. In an absolutely dominant display, they have been a class above everybody at this tournament. One of the great schoolboy sides of all time. Oliver Jarvie, Bronson Chugson, the brilliance of Fletcher Hilton, Jed Evans, Ben Millard, Toby Grace, Will Quinn, Josh Anderson, Seth Byers, Sebastian Dunn, Rowan Elliott, Noah Grace, their coaching staff of Justin Pickering, Matt Grace, Mer manager Harrison Grace, well done to Sacred Heart, one of the great titles in secondary school sport, once again will be held aloft and put on display in their front office. Commiserations must go the way of Tauranga boys. They are an emerging power. They are part of the reason why school sites train so hard because they know the rising power, the sleeping giant out of the Bay of Plenty has well and truly woken up. Let's get some final thoughts here from Lockie Griffiths. Sacred Heart there, just too much quality and a lot of patience there from Justin Pickering. They seem to just have a few extra seconds on the ball and they seem to just be in control the whole game with those early goals. Well, it's one thing coming out as favourite. It's another thing living up to the height and dealing with the expectation of favouritism, and they've done it well. They were good last year, but you sense they were a year away from fulfilling their potential. Now the challenge is can they defend it in 2024? They'll enjoy the now, but what a final, what a class act. One of the best school sides you will see across any sport. It is all Sacred Heart live here from Jelly Park in Christchurch. Sacred Heart Crown, New Zealand Secondary School Boys Champions for 2023. Great camaraderie between both teams. You've got a sneaky feeling that in the future, these two school sides will meet again.